band of brothers and native to the soil, fighting for our liberty with treasured blood and toil. And when our rights are threatened, the cry rolls near and far. Hoorah for the bonny blue flag that bears a single star. Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah. Hoorah for the bonny blue flag that bears a single star. Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah. The Union was faithful to her trust Like friends and like brethren Kind were we and just But now when northern treachery Attempts our rights to mar We hoist on high the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah For southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah For southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Gallant South Carolina nobly made the stand Then came Alabama who took her by the hand Next quickly Mississippi, Georgia and Florida All raised on high the bonny blue flag that bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag that bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah a single star. You in the valley gather round the banner of the right. Texas and fair Louisiana join us in the fight. Davis, our loved president, and Stephen, statesman rare. Now rally round the bonny blue flag that bears a single star. Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah. Hoorah for the bonny blue flag that bears a single star. Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah. At length has linked her fate Impelled by her example Now other states prepare To hoist on high the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah For southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah For southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag That bears a single star Then cheer, boys, cheer now Raise the joyous shout for Arkansas and North Carolina now have both gone out And let another rouse and cheer for Tennessee be given The single star of the bonny blue flag has grown to be eleven Hoorah, hoorah for southern right to hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag has gained the eleven star Hoorah, hoorah for southern right to hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag has gained the eleven star Then here's to our confederacy strong it's a bold, we'll fight our heritage to save And rather than submit to shame to die, we would prefer So cheer for the bonny blue flag that bears a single star Hoorah, hoorah for southern rights, hoorah Hoorah for the bonny blue flag has gained the eleven star Hoorah, boom! Damn right, southern rights, American rights in general Biden and Harris to be impeached their first day in office, January 21st. Articles of impeachment will be filed. Young congresswoman from Georgia who was already sticking it to the man, Miss Green. She gave a speech I played yesterday on the House floor talking about over 600 peaceful Trump rallies and over a year worth of Antifa and Black Lives Matter terrorists uh, burning and looting cities without condemnation. The hypocrisy of the Capitol Hill riot, right? Yeah, they're rioting so bad they stay within the velvet ropes and don't knock anything over. But anyway, two shekel chats came in. One from Salem Bagduk Chani says, Ryan, give us a shout out to UK Crypto. We're on Facebook. Some of us have to fight the good fight. Well, get on, you know, crypto is a good option while it lasts. So UK Crypto, I see nothing wrong with that. I'll tell you what you ought to get. If you listen to our Nerdcast, there's a book out there called uh, uh, No Devs, No Ops, No IT. Or maybe it's No Ops, No Devs, No IT. Something like that. 
That is the libertarian guidebook on how to run a business and get off the grid, get off these uh, social media dorks and get independent so they can't just cancel you. And so if you're a nerd, get hold of that because I got an audience willing to buy your stuff if you are to develop it. So LF33 says, Scott is cool. Thanks for the intro. Rainbow Frog, FYI, tear gas is no joke. No, it isn't. Uh, but here we go. So. <laughs> the young woman from Georgia. I'll let you uh, listen to Miss Green right here. She is on the Kyle Tier status, talking about impeaching Biden because he's on tape doing quid pro Joe to Ukraine, right? Now she's talking about the CFR clip. I've got the clip of the longer phone calls. Five hours worth of material that I have, and I know there's like 10 hours out there from the Anti Corruption Agency of Ukraine. We had it on ANC Report last May, okay? Last May, before the CFR meetings, even. <clears throat> the Hill picked it up, and it's been around YouTube and stuff. They try to suppress it. Now, I'm going to contact her office and encourage in the C. Corn, corn Pops Revenge and also get hold of me and I've got a bunch of material to give her as ammunition between now and January 21st. So, we'll see how that goes. I may need your help. So, I'll make a video about that later on uh, her number and, you know, encouraging them to check for the mail for USB because it's coming. All right. Here she is. Yeah, the things that they impeached Trump on last time or two times ago or whatever was a phone call to Ukraine, but there was nothing there. It was a total partisan impeachment. The Republicans one way, the Democrats another. But Joe Biden is on film being guilty of exactly what they accused Trump of doing, quid pro quo. And so, and it's multiple times. And you can nail him for a lot of his deals with China and everything else. The dude is sold out to foreign powers and we know it. Harris too is guilty of setting up a fundraising for domestic terrorists and encouraging violence. Something they've been condemning all week, right? Here we go. And this is Congress. This isn't me. This is a member of Congress. As of January 6th, she's been in there and has been fighting for you. Finally giving a backbone to Republicans. The spineless. The spineless elephant is starting to grow a spine. Three, two, one, boom. I am against the impeachment effort by the Democrats. President Trump has held over 600 rallies in the last four years. None of them included assaulting police, destroying businesses, or burning down cities. Democrats have spent all this time endorsing and enabling violent riots that left billions in property damage and 47 dead across the United States. Democrats' impeachment of President Trump today has now set the standard that, sh that they should be removed for their support of violence against the American people. Well done. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican of Georgia, uh, just been on the job for about a week or so, and there she was defending the president. She's back with us tonight. Welcome back. You were on last night. Big hit, by the way. Welcome, Congresswoman. Um, how do you feel about today, first of all? Well, I'm absolutely disgusted with what happened today. What the Democrats are putting the American people through is, is atrocious. It's a waste of our taxpayer dollars. And they're pouring salt in the wounds of 75 million Americans who voted for President Trump. Uh, this is not why, why I wanted to come to Washington. I wanted to actually work on real problems. But it's apparent that we definitely have real problems now, Greg. And this is why I wanted to come on your show tonight. Um, I'm tired of Republicans that lay down and allow this country to be ravaged allow Democrats to abuse their power and their positions. And I believe it's time for Republicans to stand up for the American people and do a good job in Congress. Very well. Uh, and yes, 10 or so Republicans did this as well. We'll have more on that in a bit. Congresswoman, I understand, though, you have something uh, pressing, something important and something new you'd like to share with everybody. 
Yes, I, I would like to announce on behalf of the American people, we have to make sure that our leaders are held accountable. We cannot have a president of the United States that is willing to abuse the power of the office of the presidency um, and be easily bought off by foreign governments, uh, foreign Chinese or Chinese energy companies, Ukrainian energy companies. So on January 21st, I will be filing articles of impeachment on Joe Biden. Wow. Articles of impeachment on Joe Biden on his first full day as president. I'm looking at Hunter Biden right now. So uh, we're talking about Joe. Obviously, we know Hunter's got issues as well. Um, how is that going to work? You are a freshman. Uh, you're in the minority. Um, what will happen next? Is this symbolic or can you really do something uh, about this? Well, like I said, I'm, I'm a big believer in having people in office that are actually willing to do the job. And I, I can't imagine people in this country uh, being so fearful of a future of a Biden presidency that they may be willing to commit violence like they did in the Capitol here in Washington, D.C. We cannot have that. I do not condone that violence. The American people need hope. They need to know that there are Republicans in Congress that are willing to stand up and fight for them, regardless of being in a minority, regardless of having all at odds against us, against me, or against anyone in Congress. We have to hold people accountable. Joe Biden is on record on the phone saying that he would withhold a billion dollars of foreign aid if he didn't get his way with these deals with his son, Hunter. And yeah. there's an ongoing investigation with Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, into being bought and paid for by Chinese, communist Chinese energy companies. This is a dangerous threat to our country when we have a man that will be holding the power of the presidency, but um, will so easily and is on record for abusing power. Uh, we're going to play that phone call. I'm going to actually make an arrangement to get it in a moment. Uh, but while we do that, I want to ask you, and I'm going to just play devil's advocate for a moment. I'm you know, with you on Joe Biden. Uh, his corruption... Well, it looks very corrupt. Let's face it. It hasn't been proven a thousand percent, but I think it looks very bad and warrants further investigation. Definitely. But you just said a moment ago, you know, you didn't go to Congress for this kind of thing. Um, you know, a lot of us are frustrated. I know a lot of the American people are frustrated about COVID relief. And, you know, there are other pressing matters. Um, what do you say to that, that perhaps, you know, we don't need yet another impeachment um, right after this one, three in what, a year and a half? Maybe, maybe let this one go. Just devil's advocate here. No, absolutely not. We don't we don't let criminals serve in, in our offices like president or even uh, Kamala Harris, who, who shared the Minnesota Freedom Fund bail link um, on her social media, asking people to donate money to bail criminals out of jail that attacked attack small businesses, burn down the city, attack the police precinct. These people need to be held accountable. Republicans have not been strong enough in doing that. Um, so it's time, you know, if they want to raise the, or if they want to lower the bar on what impeachment is, then yes, let's roll with it. And the Americans want this to happen. Americans are sick and tired and fed up, you know, fighting for the economy. We need to reopen America. That's how we get our economy back on track. So we have that uh, phone call, which never received adequate attention from the media. Um, they didn't even try to explain it. Uh, they just kind of brushed it aside. But this is Joe Biden talking about, kind of bragging about uh, how he muscled Ukraine into doing what he wants. It's fascinating. Watch, everybody. This is after he left the vice presidency a few months later. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got fired. About a year after he left the vice presidency. And it's so wild. He's basically doing out loud what they accused President Trump of doing behind the scenes. You're new in Congress. Um, and, you know, they got that whole rank and seniority structure there. What are people like Kevin McCarthy, uh, how receptive do you think they'll be to your uh, idea of impeachment of Joe Biden? Well, I hope uh, Kevin McCarthy leadership and all of my Republican colleagues 
will be receptive to the will and the needs of the American people. We don't need a man serving uh, in the presidency of the United States that is guilty of committing the crime of abuse of power and is under investigation with Hunter Biden's laptop, his very own son. This, this is not the direction our country needs to go in, and I hope my Republican colleagues agree with me. We will be watching will very, very closely Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Just uh, how, long, how long have you been in Congress now? Ten days? Uh, it's been very, very eventful, and uh, sorry again about what happened on the Capitol last week. Uh, very briefly, uh, where were you when it really got bad? What, what did you do and where were you? I was in the chamber and they were trying to break down the doors. Uh, we had heard the gunshots of the of when the young lady was shot. Um, very tragic. The, they were all inside the halls of the Capitol all around. I'm so grateful to the police. And I just want to send heartfelt prayers to the family of the police officer who died. And, and just our Capitol Police are wonderful. We're so grateful for them. You, yes, indeed. Um, and the loss of life was tragic. Got to find out, though, how all those people were able to get in the Capitol and why there wasn't better preparation and anticipation of what, uh, of what happened. Again, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Congresswoman from uh, Georgia, Republican. Thank you very much. To be continued. And Thanks, Greg. you bet, you bet. Newsmax TV is now America's fastest growing cable news channel. We give you the real news you need. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Newsmax TV streams anyway, live there you on have YouTube it. for free. Newsmax I thought I hit that off. There you have it. Marjorie Green going to issue articles of impeachment for Biden and mention that Harris is impeachable as well. They could be, they're criminals 10 times over, but they seem to enjoy a pass because of liberal privilege, establishment privilege in the media and social media. LF33 says, opium is a hell of a drug. It is. It's also a hell of a drug to uh, be afraid of someone calling your name saying opium and uh, th that hope cope or whatever. And thus never having hope in anything. It's like, oh yeah, go be a black-pilled fucking nihilist. That's an answer. I would rather risk uh, hoping for something and being wrong some of the time, and also right some of the time, than to never hope for anything and just give up and uh, you know go full Ted Kaczynski out on a farm and dig my, a big hole and stick my head in the sand. <clears throat> We've been accurate here. There was a legitimate uh, chance and hope of having dual electors sent to Congress because that happened in eight states and there was good hope and chance of those arguments being made on the House floor which was being done and then the Q-tards came and ruined it by wrecking the Capitol and stopped all the proceedings and so Biden was elected and the arguments were never made. But everything we were building up to on this channel was ignoring the Q shit. I told you Lynn Wood's a fucking idiot. I told you there were no servers in Germany. I told there were, there were no watermarks. We dismissed all the stupid hope that was based on nonsense. But what we did focus on were the arguments of fraud and sending competing uh, electors, which happened, and that the arguments, if they couldn't see a court, would be made on the House floor, which they were. And I also warned these Q morons are going to ruin the whole thing because the reason these lawsuits are being dismissed is because the loudest and dumbest among them are saying all this nonsense, which gets automatically dismissed. And there really wasn't a way to prevent it from going on the floor other than an illegal stunt like breaking into the building and causing a ruckus. So they just dismissed the whole thing and then they couldn't get a senator's signature to make the arguments on Nevada and so on. And they did it four in the morning and passed it. If Q would just step aside, stop misdirecting energy, you know, barking up the wrong train. I mean, this lady, you could tell, doesn't really know the issue that well. She couldn't articulate it very well, but she's got a spine and hell, we can teach her the right arguments, right? She did talk about his Ukraine, uh, his Ukraine phone call withholding foreign aid. It was a guaranteed loan, to be more specific. If she didn't, if he didn't fire the prosecutor, even Biden mispronounced the name of the Ukrainian 
both the Ukrainian president and prime minister. He got them wrong. They they couldn't even they would just used to call him Yats because they couldn't say his full name. This is how little they care about that place. It's just a way to profiteer. But here we have someone who is honest and will go after them and will go after Harris as well. Harris is guilty of cheering on and raising funds for domestic terrorists. She's also the one, you know, laughing about prosecuting people for nonviolent crimes. <laughs> she laughs about everything. That's her nervous defense. Just laugh it off. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Anyway. Spud McKenzie says, Spud says, hi. Hi, Spud. The dog. <laughs> Chuck U. Farley, what's up with all the troops in D.C.? They're in full panic mode. After the, the QAnon people went into the Capitol, they had the National Guard sleep on the floor of the hallway in case people came back in. Apparently, they realized, well, cops are useless. So they have <laughs> the National Guard sleeping in the Capitol to protect the criminals. What kind of government are you? I mean, you've got like a 15% approval rating. Your boss shows up, you know, the public, and you shit your pants. What kind of government are you when everyone hates you so much they're willing to like physically go after you so you have to have armed protection all the time because you're doing such a shitty job? And we'd vote you out, but you rigged the election, so that's not an option either. And slowly, more and more people are realizing this. Rhino Republican for three says, Ryan, who were the biggest winners from the prolonged Vietnam War? Was it the CIA? Was it the heroin traffickers? I mean, you just, that's the same thing. <laughs> was it the heroin traffickers, defense companies, or someone else? Who was the biggest lobby to keep the war going? Always not so jokingly call it the war of helicopters and heroin i think probably bell helicopter was the biggest winner but it's hard to quantify the opium because it's not i mean it's a black market so we don't know how much money i mean you we know how much at least it had to be but we don't really know how much heroin got sold so it's one of those they're pretty close uh if you just include the entire mic they're the winners for sure i mean multiple billion dollar contracts or a fighter jet that wasn't used and they were losing about 20 helicopters a week bell was making bank and that's right out of dallas fort worth hmm who was a congressman for them oh yeah lyndon johnson he became president huh and then escalated the war huh hmm. what a quinky dink yeah um as well the cia yeah they um they are the ones trafficking the heroin so it's like the cia heroin traffickers is the same thing and then the defense companies kind of overlap with the CIA too. So, but the MIC made the most money above board at least. And who lost? Well, Vietnamese got them got it the worst. Millions of them were killed. And uh, poor Southerners, both black and white, who were sent in as cannon fodder to die mostly in booby traps and helicopter crashes. Fighting those that uh, Admiral McCain and his son John McCain were aiding the Viet Cong. So, it's tragic, nine year long, total waste, no clear goals. We just defense indefinitely. You can't win a war like that. You're so stupid. But Vietnam, they defeated. Uh, or at least had a draw with the Mongolians, and they defeated the Chinese, they defeated the French, and they kicked the Americans out. So the only ones to conquer them was Japan. Fire Pixie says, Please tell me that I heard that woman that women are to wear a pearl necklace on her inauguration day for Harris this is not true. Truth is grosser than fiction. Whatever, the pearl companies are making bank if they can get you to go buy a pearl necklace. <laughs> there ain't going to be an inauguration day. It's going to be virtual. They're scared to death to step outside. Biden's been in his basement. They know He knew they were cheating. He knew everything that was going on. And he's been scared to death of this, of a John Wilkes Booth style vengeance uh, correction or whatever you want to call it the whole time. They're going to do a virtual inauguration. If someone wears pearls, whatever. 
full on put on the clown makeup too. By the way, did you hear that when AOC said she narrowly escaped with her life that day in Capitol Hill, <laughs> laughing my ass off? No one was trying to kill you. They walked in orderly, like there's the velvet ropes, you know, held by the the poles, or whatever. They're just walking in, looking around. Huh? So this is the Capitol, huh? Admiring the artwork, stopping and posing for for uh, for uh, photographs. They're not running in yelling like animals or whatever and just kicking the doors and stuff. They didn't break the windows either. The police broke the windows so that they could shoot at the people in the hallway. They weren't vandalizing everything. Aside from Pelosi's office, they knocked the papers around and the computer and stuff. But, I mean, she's a wicked witch. It wasn't like an attack. They went there to be seen and heard because they've been ignored. That's voiceless people pull stunts. They're not allowed on social media. They, you know, they have no voice in mass media. So they went there to make sure they'd be seen and heard. It was stupid because they were being heard. Finally. People sent dual electors to Congress. They were making they went through Alabama goes to Trump, Alaska goes to Trump. They got to Arizona, which was supposed to go to Biden. It was contested. Sixty congressmen. Sixty. And 12 senators were arguing uh, the case. And they talked about adjudication. They were getting into the fraud. The whole world was about to see those arguments. It's what I've been talking about for two months. And then the retard rally shut it down. And it's ironic because that's not what they wanted to do. Their intention, some of them, was to be seen and heard. I think the COINTELPRO among the Q who were there, they were leading them in there knowing when they get to Arizona, we're going to go in and disrupt it because we cannot allow this to be heard. And 100% there's COINTELPRO in the Q community telling them, yeah, yeah, you should do this. We're all going to do this, guys. And I guarantee you they're doing that right now. COINTELPRO, that's when the FBI pretends to be part of your movement and then subverts the whole thing and then takes it you know, the wrong direction. The COINTELPRO people are encouraging you to commit violence on January 20th. Q. So if you've got somebody yapping about that crap in your click, they're a fed. Learn to identify these people. Does anybody know them in person? No, they're just some online leadership guy. Fuck that guy. That guy's a fed. Or that gal. Do not listen to them. Being violent on the 20th will do nothing but give them the excuse. They'll blame the whole thing on Trump and white supremacists and blah, blah, blah. They're going to ban you on everything. You know, Proud Boys will be domestic terrorists. Whatever. It's just, you don't own the media, so you don't run this narrative. Don't be violent. You can't be violent unless you go all the way and win, which is not going to happen. So don't do it. It's Cointel Pro. So Cointel Pro... Directs the, like the cops, like, is it time? Yeah, open the gate, let them in. Because they want to disrupt it. Because there was no way they were going to allow the entire world, C-SPAN filming it, to see the arguments, Ted Cruz and others, showing you the fraud. Because there was definitely fraud. There's no way. All those affidavits and all, they're not all fake or whatever. That happened. You can't have several cities, cities simultaneously counting votes in the middle of the night that they just discovered and they're all for one guy. Oh, and by the way, the only people counting them are Democrats because all the Republican poll watchers and stuff were barred. And they're not even allowed to film the counting. They put up cardboard across the windows so you can't see what they're doing in the dead of the night. They stole the election. 100%. But... Most Americans have never seen any of that footage or heard any of the affidavits because they only get the news from mass media and it's censored on social media. You guys saw it online. You didn't see that on TV and you're not going to. Except Newsmax maybe, right? Which is brand new. For the first time, normies were about to see the evidence. And then the Q-tards just shit on the whole parade by running in, yelling in the hallways. How many times do I have to say... How much I hate yelling at buildings. I think rallies and protests are the dumbest damn thing. They're not constructive. 
is people out there with signs screaming. It doesn't, especially in D.C., like, God damn, you can legally make a meeting so that you are given a pass and allowed to go in the building and actually talk to these people. You don't have to break in the door and all that. You can talk to them anyway. You're in Washington, for Christ's sake. How fucking stupid do you have to be? Anyway. <laughs> I don't like retard rallies. Charlottesville, same thing. Stupid. You want to organize a rally, not a riot or a protest, where you actually give speeches or something so information is being conveyed? I'm okay with that. If they had done speeches for behalf of why Robert E. Lee's statue should stand, I would love that. But that didn't happen. Some of them were planning to do that. And then here comes the Unite the Right retards, mainly Richard Spencer with his tiki torches screaming about Nazi crap and white nationalism or whatever. It has nothing to do with General Lee. Turn the whole thing into a shit fest. Then the communists come out, blocking and beating cars and stuff. It ends up with a dead woman. Anyway. And... Two pigs died in their helicopter because they stayed up in the air too long and they crashed. That was their own fault. So you don't hear much about Charlottesville with the cops that died because they killed themselves by being dumb. Okay. Uh, Tyler, let's see. Sorry, I missed a few. No, I didn't see AOC say that, but it sounds like something she'd do. Oh, we escaped with our lives. Like, what, are you afraid of the public? Bill Clinton used to jog to McDonald's. Among the people, because they didn't know what he did, as he li he lived prior to the internet, really, so he could get away with anything. He also went to Epstein's islands. Chuck you Farley, a lot of government seems to be falling apart. The Netherlands, Italy, yeah, Italy's getting right wing nationalists taking over. Kuwait, Estonia, any insight would be appreciated. Well, Italy's always that's always Italy. Like they have a new government every week, all the time, anyway. Um. I don't think the Netherlands are falling apart. And Estonia, yeah, I mean, two things. You know, one of them's Italy. It's not that big a deal. You're having power outages everywhere, though. That's something. Tyler Rubel says, hey, Rye, her name is Kamala Harris. And where's the Jack? And it's okay. Most Americans I talk to hate what's happening. It'll be a cold civil war. I don't know, man. I think it's going to be cold with some warm pockets. We got Alaska and Texas talking about... Ah, uh, if it were out. I mean, how do they benefit, right? Why should they stay? Rhino Republican says, Ryan, not trying to be an armchair author, but if you write a 9-11 book, could you please include an appendix of primary and secondary sources? It would help what I'm trying to discuss with people, but I don't have time to find all the sources on my own. Just have them watch Empire and Mask. I put sources right there on the screen. I mean, all you got to do is pause it and type the title in, and you can find the newspaper or whatever it is I'm referring to. Ernie Truth for five says, apparently the Biden relief plan is close to $2 trillion with a $15 minimum wage. Seriously, how long is hyperinflation? Holy shit. Oh, yeah, the businesses aren't hurting enough. Make them pay $15 an hour. See, they don't understand, because if you live in D.C. or L.A. or New York, $15 isn't that much. But if you're in Timbuktu, Arkansas, you can't pay people <laughs> 30 bucks for two hours. Uh, they better be, they can't even, they got to sell more than $60 worth of stuff to even break even. And most of them ain't. Oh my God. The minimum wage argument. It's like, I wish I had a button to push to explain why you can't just raise minimum wage. Like, why not make it $50 an hour? Why not? Well, that'd be ridiculous. $500 an hour. Why? Oh, yeah, the employer doesn't have that to pay you. huh? Payroll's their biggest expense. That's why, why don't they just have 100 employees? They can't pay them all. They have the number that they can pay for. Be way easier if you had more, right? Be more efficient, right? Nobody would have to do lots of stuff. Well, every person you hire, you got to pay. It, all that would do is get a lot of people laid off. And a lot of places have just closed, but they're closed anyway because of the coof. Fucking dumb. And now they want to pass the relief. Like, oh yeah, here's an extra 400 bucks, whatever. It should have been 2000 You withheld it for eight months. And here's an idea. Why don't, like Japan, South Korea, and so on, 
who have lower rates of death than you do, why don't you, I don't know, reopen business and let people work for their money? Huh, how about that? Get rid of this coof scare. Look at Florida. They're open and they're fine. New York, closed, dying of the coof. This is something that the elderly and the obese die from and they want to close down gyms and things. I mean, it's just common sense doesn't it doesn't register on these people. It's all about what looks good rather than what actually works. LF33 says, did you hear one of the soldiers at Capitol Hill was photographed reading Atlas Shrugged? <laughs> he got in trouble. Now all the soldiers are to be vetted to make sure they aren't Trumpers. Well, I don't see why reading Ayn Rand makes you a Trumper or not. I mean, it didn't mean you agree with her or not. She was a Zionist piece of shit, though. But, um, yeah, you wouldn't want anybody reading at all because that's a threat. You know, you just want dumb meatheads that follow orders. Salam Bagdak Chani says, should I buy guns or crypto? Hashtag homeless choice. <laughs> well, if you're in the UK, I don't know if you can get a gun. You can get crypto, UK crypto. They're on Facebook. Bitcoin's taking a dive. It'll go up again and then it'll go down again. It's online gambling. Uh, UK crypto might be the place to be is what I'm hearing. If you don't have a gun, you might want to get a gun. Although even in the United States, there's a lot of places that are sold out. Like, you can't buy a gun. <laughs> Everybody's bought them all. They can't make them fast enough. Everyone sees what's coming down. Except the media. They they don't talk about civil war, secession, or anything, because they don't want to stoke the flames. But it's that's the underground current right now. That's what's happening. Crypto is online gambling. But, because you can't buy anything with it. But you can exchange it for more than what you bought it for. So it's essentially a digital beanie baby. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you can buy something, wait a few months, and sell it for more than what you bought it for, why not? Do it. All I just can't stand all these arguments like, this is going to be against the Fed and the dollar is going to collapse. And like, shut the fuck up. Don't oversell yourself. Just tell the truth. Be like, hey, here's this stuff that lots of people are hyped into buying. And if you get it now, you can sell it for more than what you bought it for and make some money. That's all you got to say because that's all it actually is. You can make a lot of money buying stuff and then hyping it up to get other people to buy it so that then you can sell it before they do and get money. If Be honest. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. And pyramid schemes work as long as you sell before the other guy. And right now, uh, because it's like a religion... You are going to get lots of people who are going to buy it. Here's the other thing. When it's at its tippy top and you, lots of people try to sell, they just freeze your accounts on the exchange. Only a few of them get to sell. The rest of you get left with your dick in the wind. And then after the price drops, then they let you sell it. So on these exchanges, you can't even freely buy and sell exactly when you want to. So it is a scam. But... You know, if you acknowledge all that and you're willing to buy crypto, get some UK crypto, wait a while, it'll go up because everybody's buying it right now. Sell it. Don't be greedy. Get your money and get out. But just know that it is also possible that it just tanks like 80% in 24 hours. I think Bitcoin went from like 40,000 to like 32,000 in just like three days. Just dropped 8,000 bucks. Kind of like Twitter. Twitter lost 12% in one day. $5 billion. Boom. And I, I would like it to go down another 12%. If you are on Twitter, deactivate it. If you're on Facebook, stop using it. Just use the messenger. They make money from your content. So the more crap you post, the more ads they make, and the more revenue they make. Just quit using it. Deactivate it or just stop using it. Just don't use it anymore. I think they gave Trump his Facebook back too late. He's over on something called Clout Hub. Clout, not cloud, hub. Clout Hub is only available for people in the U.S. and Canada. Because you have to have a U.S. or Canadian number to be verified. So us expatriates cannot use it. But most of you could. But I don't know, man, why he's going on this newbie thing Parlor's going to return, and Gab's right there. He should have just gone to Gab. 
He doesn't want to be associated with the Nazis, though. And they are there, too, like everyone else. Gab is not Nazis. It's just Nazis are very loud about, hey, let's use Gab. <clears throat> they don't realize that they are just toxic. That ideology is so toxic and going nowhere. And everything they try to support or advocate, they end up doing the opposite. Like anyone David Duke endorses, that's like something they have to disavow because they know it's not going to help them at all. That's the real the reality of it. <clears throat> LF33 says, did you see my post about... No, I didn't. Hold on. Let me go back. Let me, let me scroll down. I must have missed that one. Look up a Drilly Teleshenko. He blew the whistle on the Bidens in 2018 and it is now Persona Non Grata. All right, I'm going to drop that name in the chat because it's kind of hard to spell for most of us, I believe. A N D R E I I T E L E Z H E N K O. Let's see. A bald guy creation says, Hope is useful. No hope is no change. True. It's there's a balance. You don't want no hope and you don't want to like fall for everything. You want your hope to match real possibilities. And there's a little fuzz there because sometimes having hope extends what is actually possible. And so being a just diehard realist, you want a little bit of optimism actually because it pushes the boundaries of what is possible or not. Like this woman that is impeaching Biden will go nowhere if you believe it'll go nowhere but if enough people support it then it will go somewhere it's not automatically one way or the other so the more people hope the more active they are the more white-pilled they are the whiter the reality is going to be even if you miss the mark you're going to end up somewhere in the gray zone but if you go black pill you'll get black pill it that's a never-ending, nihilistic, unchanging, go nowhere, do nothing, no hope, no misery. That's automatic forfeit. It's better to fight and lose than to not fight at all and lose. <clears throat> Vibro, oh, I got that one. Chuck, got that one. Tyler, got that one. Just seeing if I missed any. I missed this one. Um... Ralph did away with Lee Jackson Day in Virginia. I know, but we're going to do away with Ralph, and I'm going to have Lee Jackson Day anyway. So, it's in a, <clears throat> just a few days, right? Let's see. It's on my calendar. I'll go look at my calendar. They had Lee Jackson Day last year, and he did away with it after it happened. So, we've still never missed a Lee Jackson Day. And that would have been today. Oh, because I'm a day ahead. That's right. It's Lee Jackson Day, and that's why I have the the <clears throat> Bonnie Boo flag. I forgot the Confederate flag. You guys ought to be celebrating Lee Jackson Day in Virginia. There's still one in Texas. It's uh, well, it's for all Confederates, and that holiday is still a state holiday. Ralph Northman is a Yankee. He's a carpet bagging scallywag that doesn't belong there. He wanted to dismantle all the statues, get rid of Virginia's history. And he's just a Nova Yankee. His parents are Yankees. He's a Yankee. He's trying to turn Virginia into New Jersey. By the way, worst state in the Union, New Jersey. Now, apparently, and you can I can't play the clip because it's copyright from Fox or whatever, but Tucker Carlson had a gym owner on his show who, you know, tried to open their gym during the coof. I know a lot of people doing that. And they fined him $115,000. And they just took it out of his bank account. So apparently, the state can now empty your bank account. Well, if you live in New Jersey and they don't like you, they can fine you. And rather than in this, no due process of law, no, like, well, I'm going to make a defense and say you're wrong about why you're fined. I mean, no, they just took his money. Over $100,000. They had zero. They looked at their bank account in the morning. There was no money in there. They're having to sell t-shirts and fundraise just to survive the COVID crisis. Oh, here's your 600 bucks, though. 
If you live in New Jersey, I would take your money and stick it in a credit union or go look to another state. Put it in a Native American bank. Do something. I don't know. I don't know what you can do. Throw it in the UK crypto, I guess. <laughs> Put a portion of it in there so that the state can't just come and steal it. They're not supposed to be able to do that anyway, but you're looking at total draconian ends justify the means type liberals and they're like shut it down steal it do whatever force the peasants inside put a face diaper around their mouth don't let them work make them dependent on the state for revenue because then we can shut their revenue off anytime they get out of line utterly disgusting god damn and it's new jersey of course it's new jersey that would do that of course if I was going to pick, hey, Rye, somebody, uh, some state just emptied a guy's bank account. I, was it New Jersey? Yeah, how'd you know? Because it, it's either New Jersey or New York. It has to be. Third place would be California, and then I can't imagine anyone else doing that. Homeless choice for the win. Paladin YYZ says, can't swing by and visit your congressman if they don't let you in. Can't call if you only get a machine that does not respond. Can't vote them out. They steal the election. Can bitch about it online if you're deplatformed. See what I mean? Well, see, you can call, and it's not a machine. It's an NPC. It'll be unless it's you know middle of the night or something. But if it's during open hours, a legislative assistant will answer the phone, and you can go and meet them. You can't meet the congressman unless you're rich or part of a lobbying group. But you can at least meet the legislative assistant. Then you're in the office. So, and you're by yourself. And you can rant and rave all you want at that meeting. But that's not like they tried that step and it failed. They skipped all those steps and went straight to being retarded. And yeah, you can't vote them out anymore because they steal it. Which is the whole point in meeting them in person, isn't it? And right, you can't pitch about it online on blueberry media but there are some alternatives that's why we're building up vk vk.com get on it bit shoot get on it you can go watch all these videos on bit shoot and some that aren't on here inside the empire right have you ever read political oh my god what the fuck is this word ponderology now you know what that means <laughs> ponderology by Andrew Lobazwinski. No, I haven't. It's the study of organized psychopaths. Very good read. Okay. Keep up the good work. That would just be any book on Congress, right? Ponerology. Okay, so I learned a new word. This fun there's a comedian, he was pretty funny. He said, uh is this black guy and he was like, You ever be talking to your friends and they say a word and you don't know what it means and you're just kinda like trying to fake it or something you know like you ever you know what i'm saying and because the, the crowd's like oh no he goes like you're talking to somebody and they just do some vocab and you're not aware of it like the other day my friend's like my dad's an optern mernon buffologist and he's like what hold on and he looked up in the dictionary he's like what is dad <laughs> that's pretty good what does dad mean Making fun of the 75% of black households don't have a father. Only 25% have fathers. Why? Is that intrinsic in the biology? No. It was never like that before. It's liberal policies. They pay baby mama more money to kick dad out of the house than if he stays. Then that's what she's going to do. Female privilege. You got all these kids being raised without a dad, and most of them turned out fucked up. Tyler Rubal. So, hot civil war. What events do you predict? And Yankees suck at fighting. Ask my axe. <laughs> they suck at fighting, but they don't fight like hand-to-hand -hand fighting. They fight with lawyers and just indirect asymmetric bullshit like that, and they're good at it. I don't see a hot civil war. I see a cold civil war with pockets of warm. Uh, I don't want to say on YouTube, but like, why fight in the field when you can assassinate, right? And that's, that's my fear that, uh, once that happens, they're going to be so afraid of the public. It's going to, you ever seen, 
Justice League on two Earths, the alternative Earth, where they just put it all around with soldiers surrounding them all the time and implement draconian legislation and spy on you, you know, spy right into your house. I have permission to access your webcam. Like, you're going to get that if you have an assassination. That's why. Another reason not to do that, aside from it being psychotic. There are other ways to deal with these people. Like, I just showed you a video of a congresswoman who said this is why they need hope so they don't get violent. Ready to issue articles of impeachment for Joe Biden his first day in office. There's something to get behind. Instead of, why don't we just shoot him in the head, go with articles of impeachment. The legal way. At least try it. At least let it fail or whatever, but do that. At least do that first. He is on tape guilty of quid pro quo. I don't know how Democrats could argue he didn't do that when he brags about it. And you have the phone calls from Ukraine itself. They gave it to us and we didn't do anything with it. Gee, why didn't President Trump uh, drag that up on the national media? He could. He could go on Fox and say, listen to Joe. Oh, didn't I get impeached for that? Oh, look at that. I mean, he could do it now. He's still president. He can get the national media whenever he wants. Why doesn't he go on there and say, here's Joe Biden essentially making a bribe saying if you don't get rid of the prosecutor to my son's corruption on Burisma you're not getting a billion dollar loan guarantee and by the way you can call Obama and ask him too that implicates Obama as well so go ahead and ask him that's what he said they're both in on it that's all they did was sell sell you down the river 28 trillion dollars to Wall Street and bailouts they invaded Libya, they invaded Syria, they did a coup d'etat in Ukraine. They made deals with China, they sold all our secrets to China for money. And what'd you get? You got the biggest depression since the Great Depression. And a bunch of wars. That's what you got from Obama Biden. What did he do right? He fucked up health care. He screwed up foreign policy. They had a housing bubble. You still didn't get universal health care like they thought. <laughs> You're so dumb if you think that's happening. Uh, you got nothing. And they're like, we had a Republican Congress. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't. 2013, you had the majority. You could have done whatever you wanted. And it was all just foreign escapades. LF33 says, did you see my post about Andre? No, well, I did now. It's from before. I'll post his name here again. There it is. Sounds like a good book. A study of packs of psychopaths that's that's our government fire pixie says uganda banned facebook and twitter because they don't want people messing with their elections i love it yeah there's a funny meme i saw in vk it's got uh it's got trump it says twitter bans him it's got uh xi jinping of china it says he bans twitter and it's got the ayatollah it says Bans Twitter and still has a Twitter account where he posts about Israeli and U.S. aggression. <laughs> the most Chad level, right? Anderson Paladin says, in your eyes, is bullion boomer crypto? I don't know what bullion boomer means. I don't get the basement talk. You're talking about gold, just like bullion? That's not crypto. That's a physical asset. It's not based on hype. It actually is... <laughs> it's actually tied to the rest of the labor market. Crypto isn't. Crypto is uh, whatever you think people think it's worth is what it's worth. Whatever other people think it is, is that's what it is. And when they don't, and then it isn't. Whereas actual currencies are tied to it took me X number of hours of work to acquire this asset. The you know five dollars cost me X amount of time, so it has value. Crypto value can go up and down just based on whether or not people value it. And so it can go up very fast and it'll go down very fast. It'll always be volatile. It will not have stability because it's not really tied to work. It's just tied to hype. It's not a currency. It's gambling. And that's okay. You can make a lot of money gambling. Just admit it's gambling. Don't act like it's a currency or a stock because it's not. The stock price will go up and down a little bit based on hype, but also if you buy stock in Coca-Cola, they actually have to sell Coca-Cola to people who want to drink it or whatever. 
there is a product and labor and a demand tied to the value of the stock. Bitcoin doesn't sell nothing other than the promise of being able to sell it for more later, and that's the only reason you'd want it. And inevitably, people are going to have to sell, and it'll go down again. It's whatever. It is a way to buy illegal drugs and stuff, though, and you know, and pedophilia and whatever, because it's untraceable. So I guess there's that plus side for criminals. But um, the way it is now with people just emptying bank accounts, crypto might be the safest way. Although they can shut those down too, but that might be the safer way than uh, just putting your money in a bank and then, uh oh, and it's gone. I mean, New Jersey can just steal your money now. There ought to be a run in the bank in New Jersey. Like, anyone with substantial savings in New Jersey should be like, well, I'm putting mine in a CD or I'm going to a credit union. Or I'm not putting my money in the... I, they ought to say what bank that was. They didn't say. Whatever bank it was that emptied that gym owner's account, you should take your money out of that bank and put it in a different bank. Make that bank go under. I, I swear to you... If everyone in New Jersey did that, that would be a big enough dent because the fractional reserve ratio is so wide that if the people of New Jersey that happened to you, let's say it's Bank of America, whatever, they all were like, I'm taking it out of here and I'm putting it in this other bank. That would fuck that bank up. You can do that. Just wait till you've written your checks and they've cleared and then go and close your account, take all your money out, cash out, go to another bank, reopen an account, Reopen your checking account, whatever, and your savings account, and use that bank. This bank, that I'm going to figure out who it was. Does anyone know which bank it was that screwed over this gem owner? Figure that out. Empty that bank. Just take your money out, put it in another bank. You get the same interest rate and everything anyway. It's not a dime's worth of difference between banks. Get out of that bank. LF33 says Ethereum is the most stable to park your money in for safety. I actually know the founder of Ethereum. He used to be an English teacher in Japan and a bartender. Now he lives in a multi-million dollar house in Colorado. Uh, but he was explaining it too. It's like at one point he could have made billions, but not really. Because if he sold everything, that money didn't actually exist. It was actually only worth millions. But like the said price is way higher than what is actually available to cash out with so it is a ponzi scheme <laughs> it's like admitted like you cannot if they all sold the money it doesn't exist they're just banking on there's no way everyone's going to sell at the same time and if too many people do sell at the same time then coinbase and all these uh crypto exchanges just oh we got hacked oh, oh some excuse oh you're frozen because we're having problems with security or, or something and they've done this over and over you can look it up uh, and then later when the price has gone down, then they're like, all right, now you can sell. I used to sell four other people on the Korean exchange out of BitThumb. And that happened. And they were getting, they were only trading like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of coin. And what they did is they'd send me a coin uh, or two. And then I would uh, immediately sell it, buy it on with the money they gave me, buy it on the Korean exchange. But it's theirs. Legally, I could keep it, but I'm not a dick. And then the arbitrage was like 20% or something ridiculous. And then I'd sell it in two seconds and then and they'd get coins and then um, send it back to them. These guys in L.A. were making a lot of money doing that. But they did that a few times. And then they and then all of a sudden, they just froze BitThumb, froze the uh, exchange, and you couldn't sell. And they're like, I don't need to sell. I'm like, I'm trying to sell. They won't sell it. And then, and you can look this up, bit thumb hack. Go look up how much they got hacked for. Go look, guess you think it's in the millions? Keep going up. Keep going. Billions. <laughs> Billions of dollars just disappeared. And that's bullshit. I'll tell you what happened. These guys in LA were not the only people making money in the spread between the arbitrage. People figured out this loophole. They did it. They were trying to buy, sell, and cash out. That much money doesn't exist because it's just it's just a graph that they make up and it's like 10 times lower than what's really on the graph. And too many people try to sell. They don't have the money. So they froze people's accounts, said, oh, God, we got hacked. We don't know what happened. And then wouldn't let people sell until the price went down again. 
uh, as they slowly started getting more suckers to buy in and they get more money, then they start allowing people to sell off like they wanted to, many of whom didn't want to anymore because the price had gone down. And that's how they staved off the run on the coin. That was, they were using Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin. It was all three of them, and they all did it. Okay, true story. I can have the guys on here later explain what happened. And I mean, because it's a Ponzi scheme. 100% they're full of shit. I know one of the founders of Ethereum. And they like, yeah, that money doesn't exist. And it says this is the price, and you can sell it for that price as long as you do it first. But if too many people sell, they don't actually have enough cash on hand to pay you. So something will happen. They're like, oh, God, hacking. Oops. D Dryden one says, Ryan, a couple of things. Is there a calendar version where there are not 5D waifus? Or where there are no 5D waifus? Also, if you've gotten me so into the real Northern Aggression history, is it truly incredible how this is still being played out? Bill Cooper, yay or nay? I'm going to say nay on Bill Cooper, except for the last few months of his life. Bill Cooper worked for Navy Intelligence. He was a charlatan like Alex Jones. But when he got hold of the 9-11 script where they were going to kill Americans, then he went off script and started telling everybody they're going to attack New York and blame it on bin Laden. So they shot him and killed him. But he used to be a guy that talked about space aliens and all kinds of dumb shit because that was his job. It's just as a patriot, he didn't care about the foreign interventions and stuff. But when they were going to kill Americans in New York, he was like, uh-uh. And he blew the whistle. So they had the cops go to his house and shoot him in the head. But, so what people do is they'll think, oh, he told the truth on 9-11, he must be credible. He's not. Everything he said was dumb shit until he went off script. Most of his career, he was on script. And it's a bunch of nonsense about ghosts and aliens and whatever. Um, but when he uh, when he told the truth about 9-11, he was being real. And that's why they killed him. He lost his life because he said months before September 11th, they're going to attack the World Trade Centers and blame it on Osama bin Laden. And a lot of people heard him. That's why he sacrificed. Uh, and what was the other questions? Is there a calendar version where there's no 5D waifus? There's only 2D waifus. And it's not so bad. There's no there's no nudity or anything. It's like Sports Illustrated at, at worst or best, whatever. Syrian girl's in there. She got a nice dress on. Nothing lewd or anything. Uh, also, you've gotten me into the... You've got me so into the real Northern Aggression history. Is it truly incredible how this is still being played out? I know it is. Well, the calendar's got a ton of... Uh, confederate holidays and events and it'll qr code they should be in transit right now you guys will be getting them if you guys who ordered them already you should be getting them any day they uh it goes to the website where i've got details and podcasts with my brother and stuff going over these different events revolutionary wars in there too because they lie about that one also iraq war you'll, you'll see it's nice it's not overwhelming but it's a lot of information also some funny holidays like john mccain and death anniversary and stuff like that. Scott McLean says, How bad is the false flag coming to ensure the next version of Patriots Act gets into the take <clears throat> gets in to take down legal white male gun owners as terrorist suspects, hundreds dead, bombing, mass shooting? I don't think they can do another 9 11 because everyone just go fake. You did it yourself, you know. Um, as far as taking guns away from white males, you already, here's the thing. My buddy Pug and his buddy, who's not white, both tried to buy a gun from the same place. His buddy got his. Pug has been waiting months, still hasn't got his gun. So the little waiting list they have for guns is color-coded, and white guys, you're not getting guns. So I hope you had one already, because shit's about to hit the fan. They've legalized terrorism if you're a minority or... Uh, you know, run around with a black mask and an androgynous whatever, whatever, you know, <laughs> white, 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 then you can have a gun. Uh, that's already happened. So get a crossbow. They're just as effective and you can't trace them. LF33 says, a woman got angry at me for parking garage. 
I told her she didn't need to be so rude. She says, you're disgusting. You're a Trump supporter and flipped me off. No reason to assume this at all. <laughs> she got mad in a parking garage. <laughs> you're disgusting. Yeah, no division. They just, just got people on television calling people maggots and domestic terrorists. That'll help. Salem Bagdad Cheney says the Aryans are back. I think you mean Persians, right? Spartan Warrior says 404 not found. What, from Clout Hub? Let me check. C L O T H U B. It's there. It's an app for Android phones. I don't know. I think they probably have so many people going there since the president went there that they don't have enough servers. Which I don't understand. Why not just go to Gab? They've been beefing up their servers. They already have 44 million. I mean, that's Gab. Just go to Gab. No, you're right. It is timing out. Huh. Yep. So, fuck them. They don't have enough servers. Ah, man. Fire Pixie says, off topic, you talked a little bit about the American Revolution. I know you're very busy, but have you given any more thought to at least one good American Revolution video, film, or stream? All the books I could find to read about it just tell me the same story. A few different, but not many. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Um, yeah, I can do that. I'll wait till the calendars are in people's hands so they're following along and we'll do some Revolutionary War stuff. Very interesting. And very much lied about. LF33 says, Maram, Syrian girl was on the fault lines a few days ago. She was spot on about the U.S. One party with a shattered veneer of democracy. Pretty much. Someone was harassing her, too, saying, Are you the chick in the towel with the rainbow frog? And then she texts me about it. And I'm like, The chick with the towel and the rainbow frog is Kate Beckinsale. Next to another picture of Kate Beckinsale, who I waifu all the time. She was worried that I put a, a photo of her like that up on the calendar. I'm like, I'm not going to put those photos of you anywhere. There's no pictures of you as Dow anywhere anyway. It's the ones you asked me to do is what we did. Stop harassing her, you fucking simps. Blood on the Blade says, how do you know we can still win against them? And what do we have to do to beat them? Don't want to be pessimistic here. Just want to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I think impeachment for Joe Biden and Harris their first day in office is a good start. And that's, we've already got that. Like, if you had said that a few weeks ago, like, don't worry, they'll impeach him the first day. People are like, ah, no way. Black pill, her, her, Finkel Frank, her, her. Well, we've got a congresswoman from Georgia already said <laughs> on television she's going to issue articles of impeachment for Joe Biden for his quid pro quo in Ukraine. And has the evidence of his CFR meeting, etc. They don't have a defense for that. That's why they've always ignored it. Biden's never come out and say, oh, I didn't say it, or what I meant was. There's no, I mean, Ukraine itself did an information dump. And then they, you got to add the laptop to all that, all that info. And like, what exactly were they covering up? The first family? You really want Hunter Biden to be allowed to go into the White House? <laughs> the power they're going to have? Uh, the pay-to-play they can do now that he's a president rather than vice president or he's almost president. He's so impeachable. You gotta get behind it, though. You gotta write to her office and say, I fully support this. Here's some info. Ryan Dawson's got some films on this and primary sources. I got it all. Everything you need to impeach Joe Biden I have on my hard drives. Corn Pops Revenge is just the surface. It's so bad. And disgusting. Salem Bagdad Chani ringing the bell says, "Can I, can I just have some homeless choice?" <laughs> I don't have any homeless choice on me right now. Let's see. Uh, you've seen Rijack. You've never seen Homeless Choice. What is Homeless Choice? You ask. Or no one asked, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Homeless Choice is a vodka so bad that even David Cole won't drink it. That's how bad it is. How bad is it, you say? Normally, if you go to like a liquor store, which Homeless Choice would never be in a highfalutin fancy place like a liquor store. But if you go to a liquor store, the cheapest vodka you can buy is either Aristocrats, which comes in a plastic bottle on the bottom shelf, 
or Pavlov, which is also in a plastic bottle on the bottom shelf. Pretty much tastes like rubbing alcohol. However, you can go lower. It's like, oh, you went to a liquor store? <laughs> you went to a store to buy liquor? Oh, that's too fancy. Plastic bottle? Come on. A real champ gets his liquor in a jar <laughs> with like a aluminum sticker for a top. Doesn't even have a real top. It's called Homeless Choice, and you find it in a vending machine. <laughs> right there. Right there. Oh, you're getting liquor out of a vending machine. Okay. That's Desperado. It's 50 cents. For you highballers can get the double size for a full 99 cents. It comes in a like a baby food jar <laughs> with, with a little, doesn't even have a, it's, it's kind of like a, <laughs> you know, you ever get juice as a kid, it's got like a, just a, like aluminum thing that you just kind of peel off. That's the top. It is nasty. Like you can light it on fire. <laughs> But I tell you what, if it's uh, 3 in the morning, maybe the liquor store is closed or too far away, just too expensive. You're like, you want, you want paper money? Pfft. Fancy pants? I'm using coins. You can, for 50 cents, you can get a little baby food jar full of homeless choice. That's the name. That's what everyone calls it. In Japan, the homeless choice. Like, oh, I know exactly what that is. It's that baby food jar vodka, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It is good. Uh, we actually got some and told... It's like... It's th I think it's cooking alcohol. You're not even supposed to drink it. <laughs> you just like cook things with it. Whatever. But um, we told this guy that this, this is the premium stuff. <laughs> He's from Portland, too. And he drank it. He drank it all. Like a champ. And we're like, is that good? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's premium. <laughs> 50 cents so uh but the, here's my here's my hypothesis theory whatever you want to call it it's definitely the worst shit i've ever had yes i've had homeless choice but this is why you do it one just the experience you gotta experience vending machine vodka and you gotta go for the lowest one which is this one if you come to japan uh you'll survive it might be for cooking but whatever so, once you've had homeless choice, it makes everything else after that taste better and you'll appreciate it more. Sometimes you gotta go low to make the highs higher. Because every, I'm gonna get a little philosophy for you. People don't enjoy velocity, only acceleration. If you're going 800 miles on a plane, still it feels like you're sitting still. When you're driving, it's only when you're speeding up or slowing down that you can even notice. Happiness and sorrow are much the same way. What you experience is sadness, is happiness, excitement, and so on. It's it's not the sheer force of what's going on. It's the acceleration from where you were. That's why, like, why... When we have computers and airplanes and all this stuff, aren't we just happy all the time? Oh my God, I can fly. Oh my God, I can talk to people that live in another state. And, da, 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 and It's fascinating, but it's all technology that we're used to. So that's our velocity. It's only when you go up from that or down from that that you experience uh, you know, boredom or excitement or whatever. If you're used to always having the internet and da-da-da-da-da-da, then you're going to get bored easily because your neutral point is so high. Uh, and so it takes more than that. To get a rise out of you. That's why people in the past weren't miserable. And people of the day aren't all happy all the time. You get same rates or worse of depression. Even though back in the day entertainment was a pack of cards. There was no television, whatever. Maybe radio came along and people liked the radio. Still no internet, no movies, nothing. But they weren't all like life sucks. and They had fun doing what they wanted to do. Because... They had nothing else to compare it to. Their neutral point was low, so it didn't take much to experience happiness. The more you get, the new, the new, the new things are fun only at first, 
But once it becomes part of your daily routine, then you need more. So you're looking at where a place where you might have nowhere to go but down. So a lot of people have everything experience depression because the neutral point's so high up there. It's very easy for them to be disappointed. The way to get yourself out of that loop and to be able to experience a lot of happiness very quickly is to purposely lower your neutral point. And the way to do that is homeless choice. I guarantee you, a couple bottles of homeless choice will wreck you. And you'll be, Ugh, I'm feeling, you'll have the worst hangover. You'll be like, why the fuck did they do that? But then something as simple as like a whatchamacallit bar or, you know, a dirty waffle at five in the morning at some shithole is the most delicious thing you've ever had. And something as simple as a cold pillow feels like heaven. Because you're, you just went so low on homeless choice that now you can appreciate everything. And so I, I, I'm serious about this. This is not just to be funny. It kind of is. But if you want to fix you know, your inability to appreciate things, then you can't help it. It's like, oh, I, I want to appreciate stuff. It takes a lot of like you could meditate and all that. That's hard. Homeless choice is easy. I mean, it takes to step outside yourself for a second and look at all that you have and appreciate it and all. Like, yeah, you can say that, but you don't. Like, you're used to just getting on an elevator and going down. Like, it's not exciting. Where I'm from, from Hatteras Island, we used to play on the elevator when we went to Norfolk because we didn't have elevators. We're like, this is so cool. You push a button, it goes up, it opens, you're on the floor. You don't even have to use the stairs. We thought that was cool as hell. Everybody else from the city, they just, they're like, Meh, get on the elevator, and they just like, look up in the air like, oh, it's taking so long, and then they get down, and they don't even appreciate the fact that there's like a box on cables that moves up and down, so you don't have to take the stairs, because they're used to it, whereas me and my brother are running around the hotel, ding, using the elevator like it's a toy. We also thought automatic doors were awesome, because we'd only seen those on Star Trek. First time I saw an automatic door, I was like 12 it was at a Toys R Us in Virginia. And we'd go up and we were testing like where the barrier was, like how close you could get to it before it went nee, nee, open. We're like, how does that work? It's got a motion sensor, right? It was fascinating. We were playing with the automatic door because we'd never seen one. How many of you have ever played with an automatic door? Probably none. Maybe you did as a kid, but like as, a, as like an adolescent. If you'd never seen this shit, it is fascinating. Simple stuff is amazing. If you grew up on an island in the middle of nowhere and you never seen anything. I've never seen a mailbox except on TV. First time someone did that was in Forest Lakes in Charlottesville. He put a newspaper in the mailbox. I saw this guy. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, on my land. You know, he's like, bring you the mail. I'm the mailman. I'm like, that still exists? I thought that was like the milkman. It's something that went away, like leave it the beaver. I didn't know everywhere had mailman. Except for us. We just go to a P.O. box, right? I'm like, oh, well, that's nice. Thanks. And he smiled because no one ever thanked him for delivering the mail. They just expect it, right? It's his job. <laughs> I went and I got the paper and I brought it inside. Um, little things, man. Escalators. We, I remember me and my cousins and stuff, we'd go to malls. <laughs> Again, like Virginia was like the city. We'd go off the island. And we would be playing on the fucking escalator. <clears throat> there's all this arcades and other shit to do. We're playing on the escalator because I tell you what, if you've never seen an escalator, they are fascinating. It's like stairs that move by themselves and you can jump down. I mean, it's, it's weird, man. Anyway, sometimes you need to uh, retreat or whatever, get away from technology and shit for a bit so that you can appreciate it. And one way to appreciate everything in life is to buy like three dollars worth of homeless choice and just do it and yeah it, you're gonna get wrecked for a few hours and you might enjoy that in a different way uh, but when you come out the other side you will love everything just if you'll you'll like don't ever get that get that away from me I will not look at the vending machine I will not touch homeless choice again that'll happen too but you're also going to be like, man, you're going to go get breakfast and it doesn't matter what it is. Trust me. It doesn't matter. It can be a crusty ass hot pocket. 
It doesn't matter. You're going to be like, this is the best meal I've ever had in my life. Because everything will taste good. Everything will be great. Except for loud noises. So, yeah. I recommend. Come to Japan. Get some homeless choice. I actually wrote a paper called The Invisible Ocean. That went over the the relationship between goal orientation <clears throat> and happiness and uh, your kind of baseline in a more serious way. And it's on the forum if you want to go read it. And there's a sequel called You're Now What You Own. And that was before Fight Club, by the way. Best dress. I gave that a long answer because it was a $75 donation. That's So when I go on a long rant and you're like, why is he still talking about this? Hey, man, I do what the people pay. I am a capitalist. Best Dressed Guest 3 says, Do you think, or what do you think about James O'Keefe, Project Veritas? Is he our guy or does he have funny money behind him? <clears throat> well, he's slamming the mass media and he recently did a piece on Jack Dorsey, so I'm all for that. I don't think anybody's automatically always the good guy or the bad guy. Like, he has done some dumb shit too, but mostly he's been good. So I give him a B+. Plus. J. Thomas, uh, check out Israel 365. They say USA is done and they are the world power. Whatever. They are the world parasite. They're nothing without America. Squirrel Nuts says Kushner apparently stopped Trump from joining Gab and Parler. Blueberries. Yeah. I think Clout Hub's probably Kushner Properties or something. I don't know why you'd go on a brand new thing that doesn't have enough servers. When you know... Trump's going to bring in millions and the servers won't be able to handle it, right? Um, he should have just stuck it out, waited for Parley. He ought to, like, get off social media and, I don't know, be the president instead. Go after Biden for his criminal behavior. That guy could be in jail and he'll never be president. You could easily put that guy in prison for all his crimes. Just stop tweeting and, and likewise and spend a couple hours looking at all the dirt that exists. Him and his children... Ought to be and could be in jail. <clears throat> LF33 says, have you heard about uh, Money Works Q1 steroid, able danger level? No, I, if it's Q1 steroids, just, oh my man, whatever. Rhino Republican says, right, what are the, what was the ambassador to Libya, John Christopher Stevens, doing in Benghazi when he was killed? He was there to arm Al-Qaeda. I haven't heard anything from the mass media about his real job there. It was part of a gun running network. That extended to Lebanon and were aiding the moderate rebels in Syria. And uh, he was going to blow the whistle on the whole thing. Before the Benghazi incident, they actually tried to bomb his hotel. This is why they tried to blame it on a, on a YouTube movie about Muhammad or whatever that happened in July. Even though the reaction that that movie, had, that only a couple thousand people had even seen it. This, this was planned. It wasn't a reaction. They had uh, scaling ladders and bomb. They had everything ready. They were going after Stevens. They had Al-Qaeda take him out. They, they can't do blue on blue. Al-Qaeda has to take him out because they want the drug uh, running operation that Hillary started to continue. Stevens was going against it. And apparently he told the Secretary of State. Well, the Secretary of State was Hillary. She didn't let his whistleblowing go public. That's all in her emails, which they, she then ble bleached, deleted, and got rid of. She had him killed. So, her Sunni faction of rebels killed him. The gun flow continued. Surplus arms from Gaddafi went all over Libya and into Mali, uh, which created a uranium scare black market out of Mali. And, of course, and we caught shiploads of guns going through Lebanon to Al-Qaeda in Syria. Aral al-Sham, and it's HCS now. It used to be called Al-Nasser Front that were operating in in the uh, Dada region of western Syria, southwestern Syria, next to the Stolen Heights. And guess who the fencemen were? Dun-dun-dun, God's chosen lunatics, the Israelis. Uh, then, then it got more complicated. You got Purple Shovel involved, and you got the White Helmets out of Britain involved, which are not a neutral medical nothing. They're just gun running turds if you'd like to know all about syria watch syria israel's invisible hand it is still on youtube for some reason 
Maybe I should replay that one. Those films are all on AMC Report. All the films that are free, you need to watch them. Corn Pops Revenge, Trump's Sinus Wall and Chain, uh, Syria Plan C, Syria, Israel's Invisible Hand, all of that stuff. You need to go see it. Jay Thomas for three says, a Mossad agent who claims he was at 9-11 was at the Capitol. Okay. Uh, LF33 says, I mean, why would he admit that? <laughs> you know? Does Nancy Pelosi have such a big hammer? She's like, or she likes to get hammered. She's drunk half the time. She's talking. She's got her little wine, little wino bottles out there. She's an eighty-year-old lush drunk that lives in a castle, eating her high-end ice cream, laughing at the peasants. It's Cruella Deville. She'll skin your Dalmatians. Spartan warrior for five. Hunger is the best sauce. You, I love that saying. You're right. Paladin YYZ said, and it's also the hungry man cooks. Uh, is it possible to pull these draconian tactics on a country without having control over the military? Yep, all you need is control of the media. Free Mind Conspiracy says, Fired up Friday, let's go! Woo! There you go. Friday night! Well, it's Saturday morning here. But yeah. Yeah, it doesn't surprise you fucking much back exactly. Somebody said there are girls in the chat. I don't believe that. We get like three or four. Three, three or four alpha females. The rest are scared. High-end ice cream. That's what she did. She did, Like, during lockdown. Because you got to understand, California is so much worse than most of America with the lockdowns. You got Gavin Nuisance in there. and whew. But it's Maxine Waters, Kamala, Camelto Harris, Pelosi. They're all Californians. They're all San Franciscans. Except they don't really live in San Francisco. They live outside of San Francisco. In their castles. Um, during the middle of that, she did a little commercial where she's eating high-end ice cream in her, like, two double-decker fucking refrigerators. Like, people could not even afford the refrigerators, plural, that she's showing, much less the castle that she's in. And she has ice cream delivered. Like, I don't know what I'd do without my chocolates. And she can't say chocolate. It's always chocolate. Chocolate. They can't say ah. It's always aw. Like A W, these chocolates, um, chocolates. Like we, you're from California. You don't have that accent. Or well, she's probably not from there. From there, but anyway, whatever. Nobody is. Everybody in California is from somewhere else because nobody stays there long enough <laughs> to have a kid there. They're like, oh yeah, I I'm moving. Once you have a family, you get the fuck out of there. Mill Hill says, did you hear about Biden's dark winter remark today? Uh, Shithead did a good expose last year on the subject. I don't care what Shithead stuff. She plagiarized my 9-11 work. She can go to hell. Squirrel Nuts says, yay or nay on Bill Biney and Robert Barnes. I don't know Bill, uh, I don't know Bill. Robert Barnes, from what I've seen, seems to be okay. Uh, I ain't gonna pay to hear what he has to say, but, um, don't put too much salt on that, because I don't pay that much attention to him but from what i have seen robert barnes is all right very different from fred barnes by the way who's a total neocon lf33 says why was nancy pelosi so excited when aoc was elected uh she she always wanted a personal bartender in congress <laughs> she hates her uh but she can't say that because the squad in the far left they need them right that's their that's their rabble rousers that get terrorists how, look, that's New York, man. They elected AOC, the dumbest person in Congress. Um, that's the Yankees. Fire Pixie in the yellow says for 25, say it. <laughs> the spinning squirrel never happened. Laughing my ass off, Rainbow Frog. That's not what she wrote, but that's what I'm going to say here. I'll, you know, I'll... Uh, I'll type it on entropy here there it's written down the spinning squirrel never happened he was going in straight lines LF 33 says Pelosi was raised in Baltimore there you go Yankee State Yankee City fucking every time it really is it's every time anyway I'm gonna play this clip again for everybody that came in uh, late new whatever and so the, consider this the commercial. 
I am against the impeachment effort by the Democrats. President Trump has held over 600 rallies in the last four years. None of them included assaulting police, destroying businesses, or burning down cities. Democrats have spent all this time endorsing and enabling violent riots that left billions in property damage and 47 dead across the United States. Democrats' impeachment of President Trump today has now set the standard that, sh that they should be removed for their support of violence against the American people. Well done. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican of Georgia, uh, just been on the job for about a week or so, and there she was defending the president. She's back with us tonight. Welcome back. You were on last night. Big hit, by the way. Welcome, Congresswoman. Um, how do you feel about today, first of all? Well, I'm absolutely disgusted with what happened today. What the Democrats are putting the American people through is, is atrocious. It's a waste of our taxpayer dollars. And they're pouring salt in the wounds of 75 million Americans who voted for President Trump. Uh, this is not why, why I wanted to come to Washington. I wanted to actually work on real problems. But it's apparent that we definitely have real problems now, Greg. And this is why I wanted to come on your show tonight. Um, I'm tired of Republicans that lay down and allow this country to be ravaged allow Democrats to abuse their power and their positions. And I believe it's time for Republicans to stand up for the American people and do a good job in Congress. Very well. Uh, and yes, 10 or so Republicans did this as well. We'll have more on that in a bit. Congresswoman, I understand, though, you have something uh, pressing, something important and something new you'd like to share with everybody. Yes, I, I would like to announce on behalf of the American people, we have to make sure that our leaders are held accountable. We cannot have a president of the United States that is willing to abuse the power of the office of the presidency um, and be easily bought off by foreign governments, uh, foreign Chinese or Chinese energy companies, Ukrainian energy companies. So on January 21st, I will be filing articles of impeachment on Joe Biden. Wow. Articles of impeachment on Joe Biden on his first full day as president. I'm looking at Hunter Biden right now. So uh, we're talking about Joe. Obviously, we know Hunter's got issues as well. Um, how is that going to work? You are a freshman. Uh, you're in the minority. Um, what will happen next? Is this symbolic or can you really do something uh, about this? Well, like I said, I'm, I'm a big believer in having people in office that are actually willing to do the job. And I, I can't imagine people in this country uh, being so fearful of a future of a Biden presidency that they may be willing to commit violence like they did in the Capitol here in Washington, D.C. We cannot have that. I do not condone that violence. The American people need hope. They need to know that there are Republicans in Congress that are willing to stand up and fight for them, regardless of being in a minority, regardless of having all at odds against us, against me, or against anyone in Congress. We have to hold people accountable. Joe Biden is on record on the phone saying that he would withhold a billion dollars of foreign aid if he didn't get his way with these deals with his son, Hunter. And there's an ongoing investigation with Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, into being bought and paid for by Chinese, communist Chinese energy companies. This is a dangerous threat to our country when we have a man that will be holding the power of the presidency, but um, will so easily and is on record for abusing power. Uh, we're going to play that phone call. I'm going to actually make an arrangement to get it in a moment. Uh, but while we do that, I want to ask you, and I'm going to just play devil's advocate for a moment. I'm, you know, with you on Joe Biden, uh, his corruption well, it looks very corrupt. Let's face it. It hasn't been proven a thousand percent, but I think it looks very bad and warrants further investigation. Definitely. But you just said a moment ago, you know, you didn't go to Congress for this kind of thing. Um, you know, a lot of us are frustrated. I know a lot of the American people are frustrated about COVID relief. And, you know, there are other pressing matters. Um, what do you say to that, that perhaps, you know, we don't need yet another impeachment um, right after this one, three in what, a year and a half? Maybe, maybe let this one go? Just devil's advocate here. 
No, absolutely not. We don't we don't let criminals serve in, in our offices like president or even uh, Kamala Harris, who, who shared the Minnesota Freedom Fund bail link um, on her social media, asking people to donate money to bail criminals out of jail that attacked attack small businesses, burn down the city, attack the police precinct. These people need to be held accountable. Republicans have not been strong enough in doing that. Um, so it's time, you know, if they want to raise the, or if they want to lower the bar on what impeachment is, then yes, let's roll with it. And the Americans want this to happen. Americans are sick and tired and fed up, you know, fighting for the economy. We need to reopen America. That's how we get our economy back on track. So we have that uh, phone call, which never received adequate attention from the media. Um, they didn't even try to explain it. Uh, they just kind of brushed it aside. But this is Joe Biden talking about kind of bragging about uh, how he muscled Ukraine into doing what he wants. It's fascinating. Watch, everybody. This is after he left the vice presidency a few months later. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. About a year after he left the vice presidency. And it's so wild. He's basically doing out loud what they accused President Trump of doing behind the scenes. You're new in Congress. Um, and, you know, they got that whole rank and seniority structure there. What are people like Kevin McCarthy, uh, how receptive do you think they'll be to your uh, idea of impeachment of Joe Biden? Well, I hope uh, Kevin McCarthy leadership and all of my Republican colleagues will be receptive to the will and the needs of the American people. We don't need a man serving uh, in the presidency of the United States that is guilty of committing the crime of abuse of power and is under investigation with Hunter Biden's laptop, his very own son. This, this is not the direction our country needs to go in, and I hope my Republican colleagues agree with me. We will be watching will very, very closely Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Just uh, how, long, how long have you been in Congress now? Ten days? Uh, it's been very, very eventful. And uh, sorry again about what happened on the Capitol last week. Uh, very briefly, uh, where were you when it really got bad? What, what did you do and where were you? I was in the chamber and they were trying to break down the doors. Uh, we had heard the gunshots of the of when the young lady was shot. Um, very tragic. The, they were all inside the halls of the Capitol all around. I'm so grateful to the police. And I just want to send heartfelt prayers to the family of the police officer who died. And, and just our Capitol Police are wonderful. We're so grateful for them. You, yes, indeed. Um, and the loss of life is tragic. Got to find out, though, how all those people were able to get in the Capitol and why there wasn't better preparation and anticipation of what, uh, of what happened. Again, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Congresswoman from uh, Georgia, Republican. Thank you very much. To be continued. And Thanks, Greg. you bet, you bet. Newsmax TV is now America's fastest growing cable news channel. We give you the real news you need. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Boom. I love the hopelessness crowd. They're like, hey, don't don't try and do anything or hope for anything. Be black pilled and stick your head in the sand like me. Nihilism and, and hopelessness is so cool. It's like the kids that start losing a sports game by like a point, so they just give up. Oh God, we'll never win. Just let them, just let them score. I don't want to look. I don't want to look uncool and try. <laughs> if you have no hope and you don't participate, you automatically lose anyway, right? It's not like, oh well, I didn't do anything. At least. Well, guess what? They're still your president and still making rules and still going to rape you up in the ass and raise your taxes and you're going to be affected by all this stuff whether you choose to ignore it or not. Over-hoping is stupid. Not hoping at all is even dumber. Like, of the two paths, to think uh, you can get X, Y, and Z and then you don't, but you might get, like, just X instead of X, Y, and Z, is way better and they think all of it's impossible and you get nothing. 
What you can do and not do depends to a degree on your belief in it. If enough people support impeachment, it has a better chance than if you go, ah, oh, fucking never happened. I don't think Biden's going to get impeached, but I know that they're going to bring up articles of impeachment. If they don't bring up articles of impeachment, you have a 100% chance he will not be impeached. If they bring up articles of impeachment, you now have an above 0% chance of him being impeached. He is dead to rights, out of his own mouth, doing quid pro quo. He is impeachable. He did withhold a billion dollar loan guarantee from Ukraine. And let's say they bring all that up, they have the video evidence, and the Democrats vote no anyway. How does that look? Does that help them that the American public can flagrantly see that he is on fucking film withholding money? That's exactly what they impeached President Trump for, right? You know all the Republicans are on board. So all you need is a fraction of Democrats that are not completely partisan. The majority of the country is independent, by the way. What, where do you think they're going to side with? The evidence. But this is what will happen. That clip of him's never been on television and won't be, other than the Newsmax. It'll never be there for normie couch potato sheep lemming to see. But if you have an impeachment proceeding going on, that is the stunt that you need to get that information out there. Biden's cut off at the knees, even if he doesn't get impeached. Because everyone's like, he should have been impeached. It's just Democrats didn't do it. Always force a dictatorship to act like one. The more you make them show their colors, the more they go like, yep, there's evidence, it's on film, we don't care, we're doing it this way anyway, is better than to not do in any impeachment proceeding and just let them get away with it automatically because you're scared someone's going to say, oh, hopium. Everyone's saying hope, hopium, don't hope. You're such a fucking loser. Like... This is a real thing. This is a member of Congress. She is issuing articles of impeachment. That is a fact. That is not a hope. That is not. That is a fact. Whether or not he'll get impeached, it doesn't matter. He's 100% not getting impeached if they don't even attempt it. So let him go for it and support her. There's nothing wrong with putting energy in and supporting a congresswoman who's finally showing a spine Say, we're going to impeach this asshole because he's on tape admitting his crimes. And if you don't, because you're like, oh, that'll never work. The main reason that never works is all you losers who've lost the ability to hope and believe anything that say it's never going to work and don't do anything. Like, and it's, it's beyond that. You cannot even just go, well, that won't work and be silent about it. You got to go and try to crush other people's hopes so they'll be as miserable as you are. Because what you're really doing is you're throwing that out there hoping someone will disagree with you and change your mind because you're miserable and you don't like the way you are. LF33 says one Capitol Police officer committed suicide last weekend. Well, was it related to these said events or did you feel guilty for protecting criminals against patriots? I don't know. Like a lot of men that age kill themselves anyway. And some people who are cops used to be out in the field, and a lot of veterans, they, they are always killing themselves. They've seen too much, and they know deep down it's all fighting for corporate interests. has nothing to do with freedom or any of that. Congress robs and murders people. That's its job. That's all it's done all year. It's all it's done my whole life. Why would you want to protect these things? Free Mind Conspiracy says, let's get an entropy poll going. Will soy boys get a wake-up call this year, yes or no? I say emphatically yes. I can't do a poll. I have to do that at the start of the stream. Uh, but I can do the soy boy poll in the next stream, no problem. It's got to be, uh, like, like, what, 10 in the morning for you guys? Ten, at, I mean, 10 at night, getting to be 10, 30, 11. It's got to be pretty late for some of you. I think we'll kick this off then. <laughs> All right, I'll do a commercial kick. I want to get a drink out of the kitchen. Uh, let's go with... Let's do a Don't the Israel. The Globalist Luciferians and their Islamist supplements. 
Let's do, uh, let's do the phone. God gave it to me. It's my phone. God gave it to me. God gave it to me. Oh, oh, oh my God, America. She's got a knife. Obey, help, terrorist, anti-Semite. I was in the shop, getting my bagels, just using my phone, and this Palestinian terrorist, three times my size, wielding a knife, came out of nowhere, broke my arm, tried to take the phone that God gave to me. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! My name is Ashley and I am Palestinian and what we're trying to do here with this video is not make fun of a very sad situation that's happening for millions of people. We're trying to shine light on how ridiculous it is that the media constantly tells stories starting from the middle. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about some things that are going on in Palestine, Israel, please feel free to watch the documentary below called Two Blue Lines. It's incredible. taste so good, it's not always easy to get your hands on one. So sometimes you have to improvise. Don't Israel. My ego, please. Ego Waffles from Kellogg's. Boom! 
and we return. Wombram says, There's squirrel attacks in Queens and I'm drinking Nika coffee in the East Coast. I think I tried Homeless Choice. It's called Everclear. No, no, no. Way lower than Everclear. Um, White Lightning and all that. That's still even homebrew. This is way lower. Trust me. But that is, uh, Everclear is, you know, that's pretty rough. Barnes is cool since he shit on Q. Damn, I saw Linwood and Joshua Phillips. Is he on the slip up? These people, they're useless. They're like, Epstein's alive. <laughs> it's the new Jim Fetzer. That's all Linwood is. Wom Yarm says, me Chinese, me play joke, me bribe Hunter with some coke. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. <laughs> He's more of a crackhead than a coke, but yeah, it's funny. LF33 says, Rai, can you make an Eric Scaldwell commercial and call it Wang Dang Sweet Fang Fang? <laughs> I don't know if I can get away with saying we we love you long time. Fang Fang. Um, I don't know. We're doing Crenshaw. I'm waiting. Uh, that ought to be done. I'm going to ask the dude tonight what's going up, what's going on with that. Uh, da, 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 da. I missed one from DJ, I think. Free Mind Conspiracy says, let's get an entry pay a poll going. Oh, I got that. DJ Cogdell, Rai, you've missed two of my super chats this stream. Well, that shall be corrected. Yeah, I mean, just scrolling down here. Mm-hmm. I bet they're green. What did I miss? Well, I missed this one, too, from Bill Savage. 36, love to chat. Uh, to someone about another server in the UK, which is a great server to begin to connect UK street level politics, ANC report, not got a large enough PR reach in the UK, in my opinion. No, but I know Sean Atwood and all these other people out of the UK who do. Actually, I'm going on his show in four days. So, you know, if you need, I have people in the UK. If you want to reach people in the UK, I, I know the channels and the people Sean Atwood's got half a million people on his, just on his YouTube, right? Um, I know people, I know people that know like Paul Watson and some of the bigger UK streamers. Well, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, you're right. I don't have that big a UK audience. Um, although I would say whatever you see on YouTube is a lie. Like I've been at 79 half thousand for months. Oh, it's 79.6 today. That'll go down again though. Um, the numbers aren't real. We reach way more. I, I meet people randomly in the street and know who I am. There's no way it's as small as they say it is. But anyway. DJ Cogdill says, You missed my entropy chat from earlier. Also, does the Vatican have the power to over power over world governments? No, they don't. People seem obsessed with them all the way. Alex Jones is obsessed with the globalists and the Chai Coms. The Vatican's and the Jesuits and all that. It's crap. The church used to have a lot of power. They... 400 years ago the Vatican opposed the Iraq war for example did we have an Iraq war yes did the Vatican saying we shouldn't go to war the Iraq goes against Christian just war theory matter not enough to stop the war I mean a lot of Latin America and all was opposed to the war because they're Catholic but they were against it anyway because it doesn't benefit them they really just don't have a lot of sway and I'll tell you what else happened when the Vatican opposed reinvading Iraq, that's when suddenly Spotlight and others start going over all these stories about uh, Catholic priests raping little boys. It's something that had been going on for decades, but they ignored it. But as soon as the church posed the warmongers, out come the stories, and it forever tainted the Catholic Church as a bunch of, being a bunch of pedophile, you know, child raping priests or whatever, which they are. They moved around, but. You know, it's only when they went against the grain that their crimes came to light. Let's see what else if I got any others I missed. Ding, ding, ding. I'm sorry, DJ. I can't believe I missed you twice. I'm looking down. Mm hmm. Sorry, everybody. Maybe it's this one. Uh, you should watch. You should watch. Uh, Majority Tyler Green's ad where she shoots stuff with a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> she apparently believes in some Q stuff, but is still going to be Kyle-level politician. 
Yeah, they've been coming out with some pretty killer ads. There's a congresswoman from Colorado. She's got her concealed carry ad. She's just walking around Washington with a gun. It's pretty awesome. Uh, General Lee. How, oh, General Lee has summoned Benjamin Franklin. Anna Hamilton says, make sure you have live stream account on Trovo.live. That's T-R-O-V-O dot live. Can I buy a batch of 10 calendars? Red Frog in Japan. You have my address. Oh, I know who you are. Yeah, you can. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have him mail them to me. Well, I can. They're coming out of uh, out of uh, Chugoku, so I'll have him mail them to you. Can you line me your address again so I don't have to go dig it up? Just send it to me online, the, you know, the Korean app, and uh, we'll get those sent over to you. General Lee, I love that name. He was so good at everything that nowadays when we are saying like what you ought to do, people say, well, generally, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that doesn't have nothing to do with generally, but hell yeah. Uh, you can get 10 calendars. We can definitely set you up. Um, you get you get one of them free anyway. So, yeah, resend me your address, please. How can y'all trust Sean after Daddy Gate? I think because he, that was stupid. Okay, that was a stupid stunt. I think more encouraged for the girl's idea than his. But that doesn't change what he's saying. You know the things like he's having me on talk about Epstein. I don't even let him talk. I just sit there and talk for the whole hour. So you're, it's just like me talking to his audience. Fucking perfect. You can't. I know what I'm saying is right. I know what I'm saying is real. I've been researching this now 14 years, and he gave me all that exposure. Hell yeah, I'm supporting Sean Atwood. If he understand and, and everything he said about put options and stuff on 9/11 was true, I have not seen him. I have seen him with some dumb guests like Lynn Wood, but that's on Lynn Wood, not Sean, right? You don't know your guest is gonna be retarded till after the fact, right? Uh, all the time. But man, if you just you're looking about promoting something in the UK and here's somebody with a 500 million person audience. There you go. He's not changing anything I say. He say whatever he wants. But he also lets me say what I want, and that's free speech. And he let me talk about Epstein. I did a lot of damage. That was his highest rated show was the first time I went on and talked about Epstein. I don't know if it still is, but it was at the time. You know, can't complain. I think Daddygate was dumb. I think having a beat the dog session on B&T publicly was also dumb. It could have handled that all behind closed doors. I don't see why there had to be a public flogging. I think B&T shot itself in the foot because he was their largest guy on there. And then they went with like David Icke and some other Looney Tunes. Like, yeah, great. You're going to have a lot of views. It's also going to be conspiratory nonsense. So who cares? But, you know, I hope they just basically they just want to make money, which is fine, too. But I'm not going to be part of it. I was part of it. But I was part of it before they sold out to go to Cuckoo Land. And I get, I had Ron Paul. I had like legitimate, censored, non kooky people to add to the platform. And they wouldn't listen to me. I'm like the Libertarian Institute and Ron Paul. He's got millions, plural, followers. More than David Icke. And you just ignored the guy. Dumb. I had Steph Molyneux, who I do not agree with, with about anything. But he's got over a million people or in the upper hundred thousands, and they ignored that because they didn't know who he was. Whatever. NG says, thanks for all those hours of research. No problem. Wom Yarm says, where the real world changes into simple images, the simple images become real beings and effective motivations of hypnotic behavior. Guy Dieboard, Society of the Spectacle, plus Ted equals truth. Read it. Ted, obviously, here means Ted Kaczynski. You got to read the manifesto. I want to say one more time, Trovo Live. I'm going to check that out because I'm not on that yet. So I will check that out because it's from General Lee. You can't ignore General Lee. Oh, wow. looks okay. Well, looks like I'll, I'll be signing up to this one. Maybe this will work for me. I'll do that after the stream. Sounds like a good idea. 
Bill Savage says, I'm not complaining, just think there are more interesting conversations, currents that would be beneficial. Ooh, more power to you. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Um, I might not have the audience of other people, but I know 9-11 better than anybody, and I know the Epstein stuff better than anybody. I probably know the Biden stuff as well as or better than anybody. I know the Civil War and the top like 3% of people that know about that better than anybody. Uh, I can have conversations about whatever, philosophy, religion, economics, history, politics. But what I'm doing is engaging with the audience because the reality is got to have a shekel chest to survive. So I answer whatever people ask. It's all ad lib. I have no preparation because I have no idea what you're going to ask. Just responding to whatever you say. And the larger the amount, the more in-depth the answer is. Uh, and if it's something I don't know, I'll just say I don't know. But you can, I don't care. if you, you can complain if you want to. You don't even have to say I'm not complaining. If you think they're more interesting conversation currents, then go over there and do it over there. All right? Um, like, why are you here at all? <laughs> like, why, why do you see the need to tell me that? Like, I know there are much larger channels. This is dinky. 80,000? About? That ain't shit. It gets also a false number. <laughs> Try to sit down and bite and talk to them. These people won't talk. They are cancel culture. That's the problem. Mm. I got a fat pretzel cooking in the toaster. Yeah, I mean, the Bidens are a crime syndicate. We got lots of evidence. I am going to be contacting uh, Taylor Green's office to say, hey, I've got lots of information on the Bidens that is not cutarted. And I would like to hand it to you because I want them to have the strongest impeachment hearing possible. I love it. I hate the government. I don't like Trump either. I just seen him as better than Biden. You didn't see me support Trump at all until... Uh, the election where he's running against Biden. The rest of the time, I criticized him for the dumb shit he was doing. As soon as it was, it was a contest between him or Biden, I'm like, oh, okay, Team Trump all day because it does get worse, and Biden is that. NG, or or is that noon? Like Chinese name, I don't know. Why did the USA start blaming Russia for hacking, and what is the evidence for that? Okay, the USA didn't. The liberal media did. And their motivation for blaming... First of all, Hillary couldn't handle that. She lost. But they started blaming Russia because they wanted to sabotage any relationship between Russia and the United States that Trump could do. So Trump continued the sanctions on Russia, for example. But the reason they really hated Russia is because Russia intervened in Syria and started bombing Al-Qaeda. Syria was supposed to be like Iraq or like the 15-year-long civil war in Lebanon. They wanted to tear that place to pieces. And it was working. When Obama was president and Hillary was secretary of state and later John Kerry, the plan was secretly arm al-Qaeda, take sections of Syria, destroy it, annex Rojava to the Kurds, and so on. But then Russia got involved. And they started bombing the caravans of oil that were going to Turkey that Al-Qaeda was selling. So that was done. And through their air support, and mainly from their anti-air defense, which is amazing because Al-Qaeda doesn't have an air force, but Israel does. And their Russian anti-air defense was able to keep Israel at bay and at a minimum and also destroy cruise missile strikes from NATO which allows Syria to win on the ground and regain its territory. The blueberries did not like this at all. Syria is supposed to be like Iraq. Topple and occupy. Saad must go, they all said. Bernie said it. Hillary said it. Every liberal shit face said Assad must go. And now Hillary's gone. Ha ha. <clears throat> That's why they hated Russia. Russia intervened in Syria. Russia is nationalist. Putin's a nationalist. They do all their own crimes, but it's still real politics. It's it within the Russian interest. Do they sell Israel weapons? Yep. Why wouldn't they? 
they can make money. Does it help Russia? Yeah, then they'll do it. Are they going to allow Israel into Syria? No, because it's not in their interest to have Al-Qaeda running Syria. They don't want to lose their last base in the Mediterranean. Putin threw many Jewish oligarchs in prison. That's not all of them, but it's not easy to take on billionaires, but Kordakovsky's in jail, Boris Berzovsky's in exile, Avermuch is in exile, Boris is now dead. He retook the media and made it for Russian nationalism. When they tried that stunt in South Ossetia, he invaded Georgia and told them to fuck off. They don't like that Russia has a nationalist for the president prime minister because he flip-flopped you know, and held both positions. You can't stand it. It goes against Western hegemony. It goes against the full Zionist plan. And so the thing was, we got to blame a foreign state. Just say Russia. The UK does the same thing with the Scripple case and the Litvinenko case. They're like, it's Russian KGB agents. The reality was, it was a Russian oligarch. It was Boris Borisovsky that was illegally smuggling nuclear material, including polonium, um, on the black market thing. And it wasn't from AQ Khan. It was from the Israelis. Because there's traces of it on the airplanes going back and forth to Boris's office and the Israelis. They have the only undeclared nuclear arsenal where you can siphon this stuff off from anyway. They're going to give the Chechens a dirty bomb. Seems like what the plan was going to be. Litvinenko died of a overdose. He got moved this stuff around too much and OD'd on polonium. They had to create a backstory to explain how the fuck this guy got polonium. Like, you're not, that's not something you just go to the store and buy, right? So they like all the Russians poison with it. Well, that doesn't make any sense because nobody's going to use an $11 million radioactive poison to get rid of somebody when they could have just used cyanide, stab in the face, throw out the window, shoot them in the head. Any other manner of death that's not going to trace back to a nuclear power and be against all manner of laws smuggling nuclear material into the UK. That's uh, an act of war. They knew Russia hadn't done that, but that was the story that Boris concocted to shift the blame off himself, who really did it. And then you must ask yourself, why are they smuggling polonium into the UK? What, there ain't nothing else you can do with it other than destroy stuff. You're looking at a suitcase bomb in London or something. That false flag was avoided because he OD'd and it put too much heat on the situation. You can't then go do it again and be like, oh, this time, right? So they made up this Russian scare crap. And, you know, they are a threat to the economic and military hegemony that the U.S. and its lapdogs currently enjoy. So they hate Russia. They don't hate Russia for any of the actual fucked up things that Russia does. They hate Russia for its nationalism and the fact that it is opposing the fucked up things the CIA and the U.S. are doing. It's, you know, bad versus bad, but that's our team, not theirs. That's why they hate Russia. They blame it all on Russia. There was no evidence for it because Russia did not hack the elections. Hillary was more than capable of losing on her own. And even with cheating, she still lost. That's how bad people hated her. It was a rebellion. People voted for Trump. They would stomach some of the dumb stuff he says and all because they're like, well, better than Hillary. And that woman's a witch. She's a witch and everyone knows it. And she's... Her lies were too see-through. Her hot sauce and all that. Yeah, whatever. The Clintons, the crime, they're too famous for crime, right? People already went lived through Bill. They don't want to do that again. Trump did what he said he was going to do. He built a wall. Maybe he didn't want a wall, but he built 400 miles of wall. He got us, got NATO to have to pay more for it. He got us out of trade agreements. He ended NAFTA. He got out of TPP. He never, never implemented it. Got out of the Paris Accord. Told China to go fuck itself. Started negotiating with North Korea. Did not start any new wars. So they hate his guts. <laughs> it's like, what? No, 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 the plan was to finish the war in Syria. And then on to Iran. <clears throat> he screwed it up. For them. Anyway. Bill Savage says, it's not about the size of the channel. It's about the grassroots nature of it. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what do you want me to do? You know, like grassroots, it's why not gather everyone, right? Get the people on this channel, go get the people on another channel, go get people. You don't just get like the biggest one, get all of them. I'm reachable. 
most of those other people you can't even talk to. So whatever. Anyway, I ain't going to help you. So fuck off. Sergeant Memory says, ATF has been grabbing guns for at least 30 years. Waco is just that. I speak as a victim. I'm sorry you had to live through that. We have a really good series on Waco. I did an interview with Scott Horton, who's the man on that. And there's movies about it. They're all in AC. Just type Waco in the search bar. And, yeah, be ready because it's emotional. And they have, yeah, they've been grabbing guns for at least since Waco. That's when Bill Clinton used chemical weapons on his own people. Burned Americans alive, including kids. When he killed David Koresh and his Seventh-day Adventist, or his, um, that's not what they were. Yeah. It's like, uh, <clears throat> what was the name of his religion? Oh, God. It don't matter. <clears throat> I'm trying to a complete brain fart there. Rolf Pedersen says, Branch Davidians. Rolf Pedersen says, have you got a take on Scott Adams, Dilbert cartoonist and vlogger? I like his comic. Not sure about the other. Thanks for your work. Uh, he just seems to be a run-of-the-mill Republican type. I, he talks so slowly and drinks so much coffee that I can't listen to him. I'd have to put it on like triple the speed. I'm like, just spit it out, Junior. You know? And uh, I can't stand coffee addicts. People are like, I gotta have a cup of coffee. Like, that joke is old. One time was too many times. You like J-Rock saying, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Stop it. But, you know, he predicted uh, Trump winning, but he was going to do that anyway because he's a diehard conservative. He does seem to have some pretty good insights, though. He's got the right people around him and all. But I can't really, uh, I can't strongly say that because I don't really listen to him. And it's not, it's not because he's bad or whatever. I just don't like people who speak that slowly. It's just it's too long for me. <laughs> I'm like George Carlin. If you speak too fast or too slow, I don't like it. It's just like driving. Whoever's going faster than you is a maniac. And whoever's going slower than you is an idiot. It's funny, but it's true. He just speaks too slowly for me. Mike SF says, hey, man, just want to show some support and thanks for all the work, man. What do you know about Trump's involvement in Jamala Khashoggi? <clears throat> I don't think Trump <clears throat> was involved in that extrajudicial killing. I think the Israelis NSO software allowed the Saudis to kill him. And then, of course, well, I guess the cover up Trump's part of the cover up. But I don't think America was into into that killing. I think that was Saudi Arabia. Uh, trust me, MBS is perfectly capable of doing all his own bad shit without America having to tell him to. They, uh, he was opposed to him, so he had him killed. His uncle's more interesting because Anand Khashoggi was part of the rape crews that are tied to Epstein. And guess who else is tied to Epstein? MBS himself. So, the nephew had the dirt, he had to die, and they went in with the bone saws and everything else. The fact that the U.S. wasn't part of it is shown by the that the media covered it at all. Because if the U.S. had done it, it just been like, oh, this guy died in an embassy, nothing to see here, and it wouldn't be on the news. But it was. So, right about everything, because they'd used him to talk to bin Laden, and they and they had to make a stink about it, because their other moles are going to feel like, oh, they're going to betray me and stab me in the back, which we are. Uh, they start getting wind of that. So it was a careful balancing act there when he died. Or was murdered. He wouldn't just die. Right about everything says, I found $50 in my couch during your stream. Here's five on the chance. On the off chance, you're good luck. Well, hey, man. If you can find $50 in your couch, you might you should search all the furniture in your house. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah, you'll probably find some coins in the very least. Couches and chairs eat coins. But uh, 50 bucks, damn. I hope that was just a $50 bill and not like a bunch of money in the couch. You want to ask, make sure nobody hit it there or whatever. But, um, yeah, go search your furniture. Thanks for the five. It's uh, a little a little small tax there on it. A little 10% tax. That's cool, man. You found 50 bucks. What a great day. Good for you. Hope you find more money. Everybody, look in your couch. You might find money if you have a couch. It is. NG says, uh, number one mentions Trump wall being built. Thanks for that answer, I'm going to re-listen later and compare notes with a Blinklist app that gives me the proper Russian hacker answer. Red Team, the spy, and the traitor. 
Yeah, Russia, d look, Russia is Russia. They don't give a fuck about America, but they did not hack our elections. Okay? Hacking how? What they were found guilty of after spending like $48 million probing was they had some ads on Facebook. They had a little Facebook farm ad, whatever. Facebook itself interferes in our elections. You know, that Russia had, they don't care who wins our election because they got sanctioned anyway. Doesn't matter who's president. It's the bureaucrats that actually run everything. That's what they said. They're like, it doesn't matter to us. They're, no one, Trump didn't do anything to help Russia. He kept the sanctions on. He made them worse, actually. Um, there is nothing that the Trump administration did that benefits the Russians. Other than not kicking them out of Syria. But what did you really want to do there? Go to war with Russia? <laughs> It'd be insane. That's what Hillary wanted. Alex Durst with 109, maybe my favorite number, unless 110 becomes a reality, <laughs> says a little something for all the streams I've enjoyed over the past few months. Please accept these filthy Yankee shekels. Hey, there's nothing but I love more than getting money from Yankees because that's less money for them and more for me. <laughs> Please accept these filthy Yankee shekels as a thanks for all the great info. I tried floating war by deception to my uh, fellow northerners, but no luck. Uh, away she goes, I guess. Peak level of cognitive dissonance up here. You can't even get those people to take off a mask. You know, it's unfixable, brother. But, I, but you know, props for trying. I don't know if War by Deception might be a little too heavy to start with. I don't know. What's milk toast enough to show a Yankee? Any suggestions, y'all? Like, if you were going to convert, like, a full-on New Yorker to get red-pilled, what would you start with? media wise what would be a good short film i don't know how about trump's sinus ball and chain because they don't like him anyway right show them that and all the corruption da 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 and then be like yeah the guy made another film on biden you want to see it and <laughs> give him corn pops revenge right about everything says speaking of russia the people on vk are much better looking just saying i'm telling you that white ladder is a reality the further east you go for the white race the better looking the women are and the drunker the men get Fire Pixie for 10 says, say it. Fucking cunt. Kai. <coughs> Bigger. Sorry, a little fucked up, you cunt. <laughs> you can't say um, Nike bigger, but you can say cunt and fucking. You won't get monetized, but I'm not monetized anyway, so I don't care. But it's funny, you tell people they're not allowed to say certain words, so those are the words they're going to say. Seth Smith says, off topic, but what are some useful sources for learning how to count cards and beat blackjack? <clears throat> well, counting cards, most blackjacks are going to use three or four decks at least. So, I don't know. Um... I'm sure there's some tutorials probably on YouTube or whatever on that kind of thing. I don't really don't know. I can count cards. I have an exceptional memory. I can memorize a deck of cards and like just go through them three times and I got it. You do little hints in your head like a story. That's what I do. I don't know. Some people just memorize it probably, but uh, but counting cards ain't easy. But but it is so possible. But people think, oh man, I'll never do that. Well, yeah, if you don't practice, but you'd be amazed if you start practicing how much easier it really is. You can do it. You we won't be able to do it at all on your first go around, but you'll be able to do it. Just like memorizing a speech, like, man, I'm screwing up after like the fifth sentence. Yeah, but you do it 20 times and like you got that son of a bitch. I think I can recite all of War by Deception right now just from having to say it and go the audio so many times, even though it was years ago. <laughs> I know the whole thing. <laughs> AP Norway reports 19 dead after taking vaccine in nursing home. Well, be careful. You don't want to be reporting facts. That goes against the COOF narrative. By the way, there's 108 on entropy. Will one more person please get on entropy so we have 109? Just one person. Here's the link. There you go. <laughs> it's 108. We're so close. We're so close to the magic number. That's why you found 50 bucks. That we had 108 people in entropy. It wasn't me. It was the 108 people in here. Get one more person, please. 
Somebody's buying a $50,000 winterized Winnie to live in. Yeah, good for you. <clears throat> facts, yeah, facts are dangerous. Facts will get you banned. We don't have free speech. His record was three times through? Well, I can do it three times through. I do, uh, I'm sort of an amateur magician, so I play with cards all the time. I think that helps. You're just used to it. Banks and sponsors aren't calling quits because he's sick. Hmm. Yeah, New Jersey can now empty your bank out. One more person. Get on Entropy, right? 108. 108 people here. 800 and something on YouTube and 108 on uh, Entropy. I know there's lag, but I just want one person to come in so we can clear the 108 to get 109 or above. <laughs> we had like 200 or something on um, Raging Humanist on his very first stream. I guess they're all used to it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, there's Brett. He's got the thing in there too. Still 108. So yeah, I don't know what why why the counting cards question. That was random. <laughs> Alex Durst with the 109. He is the uh, the leader right now. Is entropy slow for you today? Oh, it might have just petered out. That might okay. Let me refresh it. Let's see what's going on. I like magic. I like card magic, but. Um. Oh crap! Come on, entropy. Oh no. I guess I said come on over, and too many people came. Oh man. Well. I gotta start it up again. Give me a second. What happened there? Hmm. I hope they didn't get showed. I'm trying to start it. Okay. Well, at least we can do the poll now. I'm going to continue on this one. Fingers crossed. 119. 120. All right. All right. 121. All right. Entropy's back. I don't know what happened. It just... Am I on too long? No. It just, I don't know. It's not perfect, but hey. They're a great company. It's the only way we're even surviving. I'm going in with them. Sometimes they have glitches and hiccups. I'm staying loyal to them because they've always been good. You just went there twice. We cleared the 110. I just wanted to see 109. 110%. I think Fire Pixie's on the fire water because she's saying some nasty words. It should be working now. I don't know how long it was down for. Not long, because we got that card question. 124. Seth Smith was the last one. Alex Durst is still in first place with 109. General Lee, no, General Lee, 110. General Lee is number one. Alex Durst, number two, although 109 is funny. I get the joke. And Salem Bagdak Cheney is number three, I believe. Yes. They are in the red zone today. Making things happen. So we now have congressmen ready for impeachment for Harris and Biden. Getting Harris in seemed to be the plan all along, but that's it. By the way, the guy that runs my ANC Facebook has had his Facebook banned too. So we just can't talk on there at all. That's, um, I always want to say Chris Evans, Chris Edwards. Chris Evans is Captain America. Although that would be cool as hell if he was on, the, on my Facebook page. But they got it. Yeah, Bryben is a criminal. Let's see, this guy got... It. By the way, if you write something on YouTube and it doesn't show up, they're doing that, not us. That's why you should come to Entropy and write it because it won't get censored. Whatever you want to say on Entropy, you can do. Write about everything says, had a dream last night where there were... <clears throat> where there was in a world with a reasonable financial system and less cultural problems, totally unrelated... If Hitler resurrected and you had an hour to tell him anything, what would you talk about or tell him? Well, I don't speak German, so I really couldn't say anything to him. I guess I could draw him some pictures. <laughs> like, don't do it. I don't know. I wish he had gotten into art school. The whole thing might have been avoided. Um, 
I don't know. Would you? Would, do you tell them to finish him off at Dunkirk, or you don't do that? Because I mean, do you really want him to win? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I we could talk to Hitler. I'd ask if I could speak fluent German, or he spoke English, or something. There's a lot of things I'd like to ask him about, but um, I don't know. I only have an hour. I, yeah, I'd have to prep or think about what the best thing to ask him in an hour was. It'd be weird. It'd be like, hey, you're in the future. This is what it looks like. Maybe you should have won. No. I'll tell <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, just get rid of all the labor camps right now. You don't need them. Make sure you make some winter clothing in this war. Don't attack Poland. They're going to invade. Just settle with what you got and stop. Cecil Burns says, here's my shekel for the night, Rye. Really appreciate all that you do. Thanks for keeping me from swallowing the black pill. Oh, just heard you mention the 19 Norway deaths. I did a Kuf vaccine death at work today. Oh, shit. He got a Kuf vaccine at death. At... So this guy, oh, yeah, the girl, actually. She works at a place where uh, they're doing the vaccine and someone died from the Kuf vaccine. A person in their 60s who died two days later after getting the vax. Damn. I mean, why roll the dice? The Koof, you got a 99.98% survival rate. Why would you give it to yourself on purpose? Asymptomatic symptomatic people are not spreading the disease. You don't need any fucking mask. Someone went and got the vaccine and then died. I mean, you're injecting the disease into yourself. And it's supposedly weak enough that you can handle it. But if it isn't, then you just gave yourself the Koof. Don't do it. Was this person obese? I'd like to know. Corey G says Steve Bannon wrote John Bolton's memoir. Holy crap. Is that real? <laughs> da, 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 da. Cecil Burns had a death victim. Hmm. Not in Norway, just wherever they live from and work today from the vaccine. And the 19 dead in Norway. And it's being reported. That's what's weird. You don't need... A vaccine and I'm not anti-vaccine I'm talking about this vaccine you don't need it the coof it's basically a, a bad cold I had it last July it's not a big deal for most of you colds and flus are bad if you're like over 70 something anyway but man you don't need this it does hit the lungs if you're morbidly obese or old and out like you know what I mean I don't mean old like by the number I mean old you know what old is you can be old when you're 60 you can be old when you're 80 whenever you're old you know and your immune system shit then avoid it but I don't know man the vaccine just didn't I don't feel like this one was tested long enough and all I don't know Barry Harding says any thoughts on Arturo DL blah, 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 blah. Elia affidavit who worked for Leonardo SPA Claims to be involved in having vote machines. Yet, yeah, that whole thing is like trying to say, Aha, see, foreign intervention. Now you can do an insurrection act and blah, 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 blah. It's a whole lot of uh, hopium for real, that hopium, because it's not based in reality. Um, if I'm wrong, then I'll eat my words, but that just sounds like cutard nonsense to me. Juan Deer, although, you know, if... If you swear in an affidavit, you're risking consequences, so, you know, we'll see. Jean, but it's, all these people have ever done is lie, so prudence would say, don't believe them. <laughs> John Deere, <laughs> spelled like Juan, says, uh, how long until full-blown social credit scores in the United States? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe April? <laughs> Damn. We can't criticize, I mean, they, if you're like a American, love it, blah, blah, you can't criticize China. I'm going to criticize both, because I don't live in either place. But you can't get on China's censorship or social credit score when the United States, you know, it's the United States and China. I mean, Biden is Beijing Biden, so he's going to turn America into China. Donna Z with 111, he surpassed General Lee by $1. Fucking Gettysburg has occurred. She says, where can we find the rotating rodent and when is David Cole coming on again? 
Love your work, truly. Huge fan. Much respect to you, DZ. Thank you, Donna Z. I can email Cole because I've been banned on Twitter and I've been banned on Facebook and all the other ways I used to reach him. Um, I don't know. I'll ask him when he's free. He's done some really great work on Taki. Maybe I could uh, read one of his articles and um, get him on to talk about it, do a short stream with him. I'd love to have him back on. I think it's a great suggestion. I will email him today and say, hey, let's talk about some of your Taki articles, get you some exposure. You know, the censorship is real. They're now censoring the president and da-da-da-da-da. And he knows very well that I've been censoring all that long time ago. He thought about doing a talking article on that, and then he didn't. And I was like, a little miffed, but, you know, it's whatever he decides. Rotating rodent is whenever I reach the 80,000 on YouTube. So we're at 79.6. But I'm telling you, it's been that way for months. It's like it doesn't matter if more people subscribe. They just lie, right? Like, you're up 168 today. And then you're up uh, another 300 today. I'm like, then how come the total didn't go up? But it doesn't, right? Right about everything says uh, odds that the media wants us to know feel like Biden stole vote in order to pressure people into acting violent. The media doesn't want you to feel like Biden stole the vote. The media is absolutely saying there's nothing to this. This has been discredited. There's not an iota of evidence, blah, blah. The media is the total opposite. They don't want you to think he stole it because he did steal it. And like, no, he didn't. And people are acting violent because you have all this evidence of fraud, obvious evidence of fraud. Two in the morning, a million Biden votes are discovered and only in swing states. Uh huh. But that mail-ins weren't like that in any other state, just these crucial states, right? <laughs> Whatever. He stole it. Uh, people are acting violent because they couldn't get a judge to look at any of it was never looked at and voiceless people pull stunts that's the thing they're like we're gonna steal it it doesn't matter how obvious it is because the media is not going to talk about it and because it's not being talked about or seen is why people are turning to violence because they're like but xyz and no one will hear them and they're like well i'll make you hear me right that's why they're violent and it's just going to get worse jarred nine says "Woo!" He's quoting Ric Flair. He or she. Barry Harding says, saw a stat that showed more people dying of choking on food than dying of COVID. Does that mean we need to go to jail for not cutting food small enough? Absolutely. You don't cut food small enough, you belong in prison. I mean, obviously. <laughs> I'll do a quick commercial. Let's do a... Uh, Realysis. Have you or someone you love been indoctrinated into cultural Marxism by liberal professors? Does reality take a back seat to your need to virtue signal? Is even Starbucks too corporate for your trendy Henley only palette? Think Putin is having you personally followed? Are you cheering for the moderate rebels to take over in Syria like Huffington Post told you they should? There's a cure for that. Does this man make you scream and pull your hair out? If you're impervious to facts when it comes to topics like the wage gap, then you need Realysis. Take Realysis, a little red pill that will bring back reality. Sold on anc.report and getajobhippie.com. Symptoms may include thinking, personal accountability, responsibility, punctuality, reliability, income, independent of government, and a sex life beyond anime with a real person. Realysis. Ask your doctor today. Special extreme cases may require reading books by Ron Paul or Thomas Sowell. Have you or someone you love been indoctrinated into cultural Marxism by liberal professors? Does reality take a back? Those are real people running around with cans tied to them and stuff. Those are your university students. You paid so much money to send your kid to college and they end up being a complete lunatic like that. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, more people dying of choke food. I mean, I could see that happening. 
People die on uh, not not cutting up their meat or candy. It's what the two things they choke on the most. General Lee with 69 says, Opinion on Gypsy Crusader. I don't know who that is, so I have no opinion. Who is that? I've heard that name. Who's the Gypsy Crusader? I don't know. Uh, what's their opinion on Lincoln? That's the quickest way to sum somebody up. Hit 69. <laughs> 69. General Lee is now number one. Donna Z, number two. And uh, I believe Alex. Let's see. What was it Alex Alexander? Alex Drust is number three. 109. 111. Plus. Uh, and then we got 110, 169. That puts him at 170. General Lee has. Giving you Cold Harbor and, you know, taking back the loss from Gettysburg. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, they're saying I wouldn't like him. Who would sum this person up? Who is it? I mean, look, you want me to Google it? You sent the money, so I'm going to look at it. First, I'm going to go on Trovo. Who is Gypsy Crusader? If it's a basement person, I, I just don't follow that anymore. Know your meme, all right? Looks like they have a bit shoot. I don't have time to watch a video. It looks like they're on Twitter. So they can't be too cool if they're on Twitter. <laughs> uh, but we'll go look at it real fast. If you're not banned on Twitter, you're not... Oh, the clown guy. Yeah, pretty funny. I've seen one of his videos. Um, It's just like, ha ha, I said some racist stuff. If that's, oh, you're like, oh my god, the shock value, he's saying, hey, whatever. The the video he did with uh, the communist where he's dressed up like the Joker, and then they both hate the Jays or whatever, and like, ha ha ha, we're all cool because we all hate the Jays. I get it, it's funny if you're 12, but um, does he say anything of substance? Like the comedy, I get, but like, is there anything past that? I'd like to know. I don't know the guy. I've only seen the one video. I was like, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Nothing you can actually show on YouTube, though. <laughs> right about everything says, idea, ANC power rankings chart for donations. I think Entropy has something like that. Streamlabs used to, but they, we can't use them anymore. Um, hmm. I get a pie chart at the end of the month that has it. Uh, but I don't know if people want that help or not. Um, I could get rid of the amounts and just say the 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 top superstars or whatever. We could do that. It's got to be late at night. I'm going to let you guys go. Captain Gregor says, thanks for all you do, Rye. Thank you, Captain Gregor. Uh, it's been a successful stream. Calendars are out. Order them because tomorrow's the cutoff day for the discount you can get them for 88 right now and i think they go up to 100 after that so get it today or tomorrow it's lee jackson day get a calendar it's lee jackson day if you're a rainbow frog it's only a buck if you're a paladin or something consider upgrading and get a calendar for a dollar you end up saving money you can always go downgrade again later anyway when i don't want you to i'd rather you stay up there but do whatever you need how do I send money to Ryan anonymously right now? You can go to ancreport.com and click on donate. I'll get it for you. Or you can send it on Entropy and just uh, won't read your name. Um, it should be your nickname anyway, though, right? On Entropy, Entropy is going to take 15%, but it's also convenient and easy. Let's see. Shop, donate, I believe. Yeah. Here's the link. If you just want to donate to the site or to commercials or films and things like that, that's the link. It's acreport.com slash shop slash donation. Entropy will say the name you knew, you use. It's anonymous. I don't know what your real name is. It just says like, like Joey Hartman just donated and that might be the real name. It might not be. But Joey Hartman says, would give... 112 but i'm more of a five dollar mood today 
Who do I email for my map? Oh, Ricky at ANC Report. If you had missed the map for that long, three months, he says, then you ain't getting a map. You're not on the list or something. Please email him and say, oh, I've been waiting on a map for this long. And Ryan said, to get it, and we'll get it to you. They only take days now. We have them in stock. We have a surplus of maps. But it was, uh, it's been some shit, dude. I'm not in charge of mailing them. Because of the Rona, I'm not allowed to mail from Japan, which was the plan. So I got to rely on other people in the U.S. And a lot of Americans are lazy. Also, the place that prints them, one of them gave us the, the show up because they looked at the content. So we had to get another one. And we got back ordered and whatever. That's why I brought Ricky on board to like sort all this tech shit out. And he's been good. But people who got it months ago is before Ricky was part of the team. So Ricky at ancreport.com. Tell them everything, and we'll get to you as soon as possible. That's who you email. Cecil Burns says, Ryan, you missed a couple earlier super chats. I'm going to go back and look. Who did I miss? So we have a power ranking, opinion on Gypsy Crusader, solid. I saw his dad, a woo. Right about everything. Also, putting us in camps are just a myth, right? Right? <laughs> well, you're not going to have FEMA camps or Jade Helm, but like a university is a camp. Hell, you're not even in a camp. They'll lock you in your own house. <laughs> like, you can't go outside, peasant. The coof is upon us. It's mutated. Just trust us. We're the government. Let's see. We're going to find rotating rodent. I'm going to release that after. A medical examiner, right? Okay. I'm a medical examiner, right? I get all the coof cases and unnatural deaths from my state. He was obese. Lots of comorbidities. Every one of my coof autopsies has been morbidly obese called it that's what i said was he obese i want to know being too fat is killing americans it's killing everybody but it's killing americans in particular and being sedentary because you can't go outside not even to walk somewhere to shop is contributing to obesity we need more gyms and aerobics and yoga and all that sports and they're killing it, man. It's part of the eh, toxic masculinity. <laughs> All you got to do is put your shoes on and you pass PE nowadays. It's pathetic. If you're overweight, but you're like, but well, I ain't morbidly obese. Yeah, but why even go that direction? If you'd like to lose weight, we're going to do a show on that. There's a lot of easy, minimal stuff you can do, even in a chair, bed weather. I will show you the... I can't do that because I'm out of shape exercises that you can do that will then get you in shape that you can do the ex other exercises. Because some people are like, I ain't going to go run because they just can't. Their knees are fucked up, too fat, whatever. There's other stuff, calisthenics and stuff you can do in your house to like go up to level two. And then once you're on level two, you can actually, there's lots of things you can do and it's easy to lose weight. But if you're really out of shape, it's hard to lose weight. But there's, there's a TikToker, a calisthenics guy on TikTok. I got to get his name. He's really great on that stuff. And it's, and you know, if you've been injured and you got fat because your leg was broken, whatever, and you're like, there are a lot of reasons, whatever. We'll do a show on, on uh, what I think for that. Donna Z says, rotating right in link. Well, that's, we didn't reach 80,000. We're still at 79.6. We need 400 more people to add and then. And then we will drop that one. It's going to be on Rumble. Cecil Burns says, Right, you missed a couple super chats. I hope the ones I just read were the ones I missed. Barry Harding says, Thanks for the chat. I'm going to scan again to make sure there aren't any others I missed. Mm. Right about everything says, I had a dream last night. Well, I got that one. Sorry. I think I got him. Alright, let me know if I didn't. But I think I got him this time. Oh no, Sergeant Memories. ATF has been grabbing... No, I did get that about Waco. You should definitely see the Waco documentaries on ANC Report. In fact, I might... Um, I don't know, I might throw that up on the front page again for a little while. Jared Nine says, Ride Jack and Ronnie Coleman stream when? <laughs> It's up to Ronnie Coleman. I'll do it. Um, you'd have to organize that. I'll be on Sean Atwood's show in 
on the 20th on UK time. Sal says, best way to lose weight is don't eat. Well, yeah, at first, but you're going to have to eat and then you'll rebound and end up gaining it back. The best way to lose weight is to increase your metabolism. Long term is to increase your metabolism. And the way to do that is by building muscle. And you're not going to be he or something. You'll build it. You won't even notice that you grew at all, but your metabolism will. Eating less will. It's a double-edged sword because eating less makes you lose weight, but it also lowers your metabolism. So then you got to eat even less than that. So eventually you got to eat again. You gain your weight back. Don't you think it's odd that someone's like just a little fat or fat or whatever, but they don't get any fatter. They don't get any thinner. They're just kind of stuck at a certain thing. Like, why don't you just keep getting fatter and fatter and fatter, right? If you're eating wrong. No, they just sort of, it's whatever the equilibrium between the amount they work out and the amount they eat is. And so they're like that level, right? They go down a little bit and then they eat enough the next day and whatever. What you eat matters. How much you eat matters. But how much you move around matters the most. For losing weight. If you're really thin, it's and you like I eat like a motherfucker and I can't gain any weight. Try not eating. Lower your metabolism and that's how you gain weight. It's counterintuitive, but it'll work. Right about everything says, I found another twenty. This is a good day. European phenotype on the way. Let me ask Andrew about that. It's hard to get hold of him. I owe him money right now that I can't send to him because I don't have PayPal and he doesn't have any of the alternatives. I'm like, get an alternative. I'm in no hurry to pay you. And like, if you can't, if it's not important enough for you to get a different uh, thing than PayPal, then I ain't worried about it either. But I will ask him about it. You found seventy dollars, man, which made me ten. Well, less than ten because it goes to entropy. But yeah, not bad. Eric Tool says I'm stuck in Cal- California. And I imagine things will get violent. My mind goes places in Minecraft and I'm a mental health professional. <laughs> I can't even imagine what others are thinking. Yet the thing is, so many people are right on the line that once one or two people like break it, everyone's it, the mobs, is, yeah, and they're all going to pour in and be throwing rocks and everything else. It's like they don't even know what to do, though. Like be violent to what? Gary's house? Like Gary Newsman? What do you do? Like, you guys are getting fucked over. You're taxed. You got homelessness and syringes and drugs. And, you know, California sucks. Move to Texas if you can, if you have the type of job that you can go somewhere else and do. But, um, yeah, I fear it, man. They, they're they making violence the only option because you're not allowed to speak. They don't understand. Suppressing free speech leads to violence. Every time. Every time people can't be heard, like when they passed the tariff that caused the secession, 47 out of 48 southern states voted against it. And they just did it anyway. Because it didn't affect the North. They weren't exporting anyway. So they like, we don't care. If you get ignored and people who get ignored turn to the gun. I'm all for secession. I don't want a war. I want separation. And they're like, we don't want you to secede. Well, look, we're going to vote on it. And that's possible within two years, the independent country of Texas. And they have the right to do that. You have fucked this country so... it's, It's so fucked up with these liberal ideas. All the liberal cities are in debt and full of crime and drugs and depravity. Like, your ideas don't work. You are wrong. They just bribe their way into places and, like, it's Yankee politics. And leaving is really the only way I see to fix it. I, I, tr- I would like impeachment proceedings and antitrust laws and all this stuff. I just don't have a lot of faith in that. Separation from New York and California would be excellent. Let them do their own roles and they'll go, they will fall apart without leeching off the rest of us. Fire Pixie says, Woo! <laughs> right about everything says, Speaking of making you money, I'm working with a few ex-history teachers on education programs. Wondering if you would be interested in contributing if the shekel is sufficient it would be a sin not to ask you. I would promote my brother to do that since he's over there and he also knows a lot about history. I'm also down, but you'd have to 
coordinate Skype or something or Zoom. I guess you're all on Zoom now. Yeah, I'm down. Fire Pixie says, oh shit, I just remembered. John McCain is still dead. Woo! Hey, tips to that. John McCain is still dead. And you know what else? So is Sheldon Adelson. May God torture their souls. Eric Tool for three says, I'm officially moving to Texas. Cheers, Rye. I need to come visit you so I can show... So you can show me that yellow pill. I am 29. I have family money. I just want to make sure I choose the right woman. Get over here to Osaka. In the, in the words of Scorpion, or what's it, Scorpio? Scorpio. Get over here. <laughs> you will take the gold pill and you'll be regretting Texas because you're like, maybe I should have moved to Japan. Well, maybe. As soon as they allow visitors, I don't think they do right now, uh, get on that airplane. I think everybody's coming to Asia as soon as it's available. Texas is great. Great weather. It's a good state. Florida, too. They got a really good governor. Uh, Anti-coof. Anti-fear of the coof, I should say. Florida really turning itself around. Florida and Texas. Any of those. It's, you know, I, I would like to fix California. I think there's plenty of Californians that feel disenfranchised. They're like, it doesn't matter what I do. This is a liberal state. They always win. You know, they got to feel like that's why they're moving. They're like, this is un unfuckable. So I'm just going to move to another state. The intolerant left will not allow dialogue. Although you do have Tito Ortiz in Huntington Beach. He did win and he could become mayor because they just rotate seats around, right? Um, but yeah, by and large, that state sucks. And all the little potheads from L.A. and San Francisco, they're just going to vote liberal. They're going to try and vote themselves money. But like, let's raise the minimum wage, man. Not knowing that then they're just going to get fired. You're going to have like 30 and 40 year olds flipping hamburgers. You're like, 15 bucks. Yeah, I'll do that job now. And these kids ain't going to get any jobs. <laughs> they're unreliable. It's going to be impossible for them. Any, except for the good-looking girls with the tatas. That's the only ones they'll hire. A young man's not going to have a chance. 144 on entropy now. That's excellent. I am about to bounce, though. Until, well, I'm going to read this. Write about everything. I will reach out soon, brother. I want a drink with Fire Pixie. Seems like a good alternative than business loans. <laughs> hey, she's got a restaurant. Head over there in South Carolina. Get tossed and, uh... You know, maybe we can all, we can get Fire Jack and Right Jack and Ride Jack together. I don't know if Jack Daniels is your particular poison, but uh, it works for me. <laughs> the chat's funny. I can't read some of these. <clears throat> Feel the steel. <laughs> Wisconsin's kept the coof away too, but the weather sucks. Other than the weather, there's nothing bad about Wisconsin. I mean, Milwaukee, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they're kind of like warm Canada. That's a nice way to spin it. Wisconsin's like warm Canada. <laughs> I mean, slightly less than colder than balls. No, Japan doesn't have socialized medicine. Japan has a 70-30 mixed system. Dumber. Dumber than fuck. And they have public and private education, the same as the United States. And you have to pay for it. And you got to test to get into high school. It's not automatic. You got to have the grades or you don't get to go at all. High school is where they try. University is a joke. They don't learn anything in university. They basically have like really good high school education. And they go to university to play because they know they're going to work like drones and worker bees the rest of their life. Their education is so bad here. You think people, Japanese people are smart? They might be smart, but they're not educated. Like you ask these people where uh, Mongolia is, they wouldn't know. It's two countries away. They learn nothing. Their school system is so bad. It's like everybody here goes to Jukyu cram school to to actually learn from private tutors because the school system, you know, from the government teaches them absolutely nothing. So they go to the school system, and then they have to go to cram school to actually learn skills. 
because everybody, everyone here knows. You ask anybody in Japan about Juku, fucking every single kid is in cram school to pass the test and stuff because they learn nothing in school school. Because if you fail, like in the U.S., if you don't get good grades, you have to do that same grade again, right? If you don't get 70% or more in sixth grade, next year, you're back in sixth grade, right? In Japan, you could get a 50, a 20, it doesn't matter. They just pass you along based on your age. So if you don't like something, like you just don't like math, you just don't do it because it doesn't matter if you fail. You get passed along anyway, right? And they don't care. But if you're ever going to get a real job, they have all these sets of tests and stuff that you have to pass, which you cannot do without specifically studying for the test. So they go to cram schools. That's why like, there's this booming private industry of, of GQ schools all over the all over the country to do it. As far as their health care, if it's Saturday, hospital's not open. Sunday, hospital's not open. If it's lunchtime, it might not be open. That's what universal health care is like. It's called, it's free, it's also unavailable and sucks. <laughs> like, you know, the drugs they have, a joke. I had to import anti-inflammatory drugs from Canada for my back because well, everything I could find in Japan, although cheap, also was absolute shit and didn't work, right? Ibuprofen, which you can buy over the counter in the United States, is stronger than the medicine you can get prescribed from a doctor in Japan. This country is so anti-drug, you can't even get NyQuil. NyQuil, like to help you sleep, that's illegal. That's a hard drug, right? It, universal healthcare sucks. But what's worse is what the U.S. has. Because the U.S. has the worst convoluted system imaginable. They've got Medicare and Medicaid, which is free. And the quality is absolute dirt shit. And then they do have quality surgeries and stuff. That's why everybody comes to the U.S. when it's something serious. The only thing bad is the price. And the price is insane because of government regulations that actually prevent negotiating the price down. And until January 1st of this year, they didn't have price transparency. That's something that Trump got done. Price transparency in medicine was absolutely vital for the United States. But all these people that act like it's either what the U.S. has or universal health care, you're wrong. You can have a free market system, which the U.S. had up until the 50s, and they ruined it. But universal health care, like, oh yeah, great, stand in line and die waiting for a doctor. It's like, oh, it's free. It's free. It also sucks. The quality is shit. It's sometimes it's not even open. Like, I had a denovirus in my eyeball, and some fucking idiots broke the pipes on the apartment where I live, so we didn't have water. I couldn't even wash it, and there was no running water in our house. And we have a baby, right? I couldn't go to the hospital. You want to know why? Because it's not open. It's not open 24 hours a day because why? They don't profit enough. So they just don't do it. I had to sit there and suffer with ocular pressure uh, until the following morning where I could go to the hospital. <laughs> and if I, they didn't even know it was adenovirus. They were checking all these other things, broad spectrum antibiotic, blah, all of which I still had to pay for because 30% of the bill is still yours. The other 70 is covered by what's so-called universal health care. At the end of the day, there's nothing they could do. It's a Dana virus, so all the medicine in the room and everything I paid for didn't matter because it had nothing to do with it. It wasn't bacterial. It was a virus. So I get these antiviral things that didn't do shit, and the whole family ended up getting it. Nothing happened. It would have been better. Uh, it would have been the same, actually, if I just stayed home. Stayed in bed, cleaned my eye, got some wipes to wipe the pus and shit out of it. It wouldn't have mattered. Every time I've ever been in the hospital here, it didn't matter. The only time that was good is when I had a torn hamstring, and it only cost me 25 bucks to get some crutches and painkillers that didn't work. Uh, but I could deal with the pain. It's called don't move around on your leg. That was nice. So that's better than the U.S. Same thing happened in the U.S. cost me 600 bucks, and I had insurance too. The price in the U.S. is insane. The problem with U.S. healthcare is the price. It's not the quality. We have good surgeons. We have great ophthalmologists. We've got we, it's great for plastic surgery, dentistry stuff where the market hasn't been fucked up. It's where you didn't have price transparency until this year, uh, and you don't have competition across state lines for insurance. That's what drives the price up. 
But it's, the profit incentive works. We get the best doctors. We get the best everything. But because our education system is so fucked up and all these people have huge looming student debt from medical school, they're not going to whine too much about the high prices. They want to pocket that money because they're in debt anyway. you got to fix education before you can fix medicine. And that's easy. Get rid of guaranteed student loans. Prices drop. One and done. When they did that is when uh, school just became insanely priced, which in fact spilt over and made medicine insanely priced. We wouldn't allow generics, which you should. Here, everything's generic. So the price is not the problem here. The quality is. <laughs> like, you're just going to, you don't want to go to a hospital in Japan. You're just going to die. Like, you better, you'd be better off doing home remedies. Because that's free too, pretty much. <laughs> and they do. That's why they're all like, have some tea and do this. They have all these alternative medicines because they all know when well, you don't want to go to the hospital, they're not going to do nothing. They're just going to put you to bed. You know, oh, you're in a hospital bed. Now what? And they just run around and talk about you. They don't fix anything. You don't want to get there. Trust me. Fire Pixie says, say it. Six million sounds a little high. Sure does. That sounds like a lot of people. Spinning Squirrel, I'm loving this shit. <laughs> Did you just now watch Spinning Squirrel? Because that'll blow your mind. If if you want to take, if you want to really mess with a normie, like, hey man, I saw this film called The Spinning Squirrel. It's like a three-parter. You want to watch it with me? Looks interesting. It's about World War II. Okay. And yeah, and just watch them slowly <laughs> go nuts. Most of them can't finish it. Like this is too truthful for me. Barry Harding says, sneaking in a question, you may have covered this. Could you comment on the overreaction to Capitol Hill? 20,000 soldiers and massive fence barbed and bolted. Yeah, seven foot fence. They're scared. They had the National Guard sleep on the floor overnight with guns because of Trump supporters. These are just a bunch of like rednecks with Trump flags that chant in USA. They're not trying to kill you. If they were, they would have brought AR-15s with them, and the, and you would all be dead. Like, cause you're they could have. You got what a hundred people? They just pop, 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 dead. Break in the door, kill you, gas you. It could have been so easy. That wasn't the goal. They just wanted to be heard. It's an over expenditure, and it's like you're so stupid. It doesn't matter. Like if you put all the fences and guards and stuff out, you're walling yourself in, but you don't live in that building, do you? Are you going to bring the guard with you to your house and to your home state and everywhere else you go? That sounds expensive. If 74 million people are committed to get you, they're going to get you. That's not the scenario, though. Those people are not trying to kill you. They're not domestic terrorists. They're just, you know, high on the being in the crowd with the Trump flags and someone goes in the door. So the rest of them did. They just walked around locking at the art and stuff and yelling USA they weren't like beating the doors in and stuff like that. And they weren't bringing guns and all. They weren't throwing rocks. They weren't being violent. They're just rabble rousing. They wanted to be heard. They're chanting slogans saying, fuck Antifa, USA, USA. You know, there was no movement to kill Congress or anything. And if they did, why didn't they bring weapons? They didn't because that wasn't the point. COINTELPRO bought hammers and stuff. That's the FBI disrupting what was going on on the floor, which was preventing the steal but the regular trump supporter that was there was unarmed at most had a flagpole or something and just running around chanting with the crowd that's all it was they're not domestic terrorists they're just hicks you know there's nothing to worry about total overreaction fence barbed wire etc because they know they stole it like if you have to protect yourself with fences and barbed wire and armed guards all the time then you did something wrong Trump can go to rallies with 100,000 people there, 30,000 people there, and he's just on a stage with the podium. It's the only thing between him and all these people. There's people behind him, in front of him, left of him, right of him. Biden can't do that. One, he can't generate a crowd like that. And two, he wouldn't be safe in a crowd like that because everybody hates his guts. Barry Harding, sneaking out, I got that one. Uh, right about everything. Say it. 109 sounds a little low. <laughs> It does. We're at 147, though, now. So, yeah, 109 was a little low. 147 sounds like a better number. There's only 141 countries, though. 
Todd Harvey says, they're not scared at all. They're sending a message that all your troops belong to us, you rednecks. <laughs> they staged the event themselves. Now they're scared. They were cowering in the fetal position. You look, at, they're frightened. These people are absolute pussies. And they're going to do a big display of force. You'd be like, you can't get us now. We have the National Guard. Like, okay, have the National Guard out there 24 hours a day. There's no attacks coming. You're just wasting our money on the National Guard. The National Guard is going to get sick of just sitting there laying on the Capitol floor. But whatever. They get paid. They're like, ready. It's like, obviously, if you put, uh, if you openly put all your defense in one spot, they're just not going to hit that spot. They're going to hit a different spot. Duh. I mean, what if they just kill the power grid? You guys can't live without electricity. We can. <laughs> you know, like, there's so many. I'm not suggesting that, by the way. But um, there's so many things they could do. My imagination has thought of a thousand different scenarios to get around the guards in ways. And if I can think of it, other people can think of it. I'm not going to say them on YouTube because that would get a show it. But, you know, I may bit shoot a list of things. Anarchist cookbook style. Anyway, Todd Harvey said, oh, they got that one. Cecil Burns says, our med system sucks, as you know, right? Docs don't know the price of anything as the finances are totally hidden from us. I know. Plus, we're indoctrinated in med school to be gatekeepers. You wouldn't believe the denial docs are having in private MD. Only social groups regarding all this serious coup fact side effects we're seeing. I know. The med system's fucked up, but, you know, the um, the sandwich brains, the light switch brains that are all A or B, they think it's either the fucked up system the U.S. has or the glory of your universal health care. It's like, no, the U.S. system is worse. But universal health care is not the answer. There's so many problems with that, too. It's just better. America's got even more government than that. <laughs> it's like you're allowing the insurance companies and the regulators to dictate pricing. That's the worst possible. That's worse than the doctors or anything else. That's, what, that's, that's when you have the marriage of corporation and state. But when you make things, when you take it and you lessen the profits which does bring down the prices some, you also lessen the quality. And uh, just look at Canada. They have universal health care. There are Canadian refugees that go and are willing to pay to go to the U.S. to get things fixed because they can't even get a doctor. They're still waiting in line. Dying of cancer. You can go and immediately go to a hospital in the U.S. in one day. And if you're poor, it's free. If you make less than $30,000 a year and you have a medical problem, it doesn't cost you a dime. And if you're old, it's free. We have Medicaid and we have Medicare. It's all the people in between that are getting stuck with the bill for the rest of it, though. That's the problem. You want to go one or the other. Either have a completely free market system where there is no socialized medicine, so the price is down. Or have complete universal health care. You don't have this half and half crap, like... Well, all the poor people and old people are free, and all the rest of you have to pay for that. That's why the price is so damn high. Either get rid of Medicaid and Medicare, which would be the best option, or give it to everybody. There's nothing dumber than like going halfway in the road. right? You're either on the one side or the other. If you're in the middle, you're going to get hit by a car. And right now, the U.S. is dodging cars. They're just sitting in the middle, government paying for some, but not negotiating the price down and everyone else that has a real job and pays taxes. It's as how the richer you are, the more it costs. I know a millionaire whose daughter got cancer who died. Uh, she spent millions of dollars trying to save her is the price just kept going up. It's whatever, much, how much you have, that's how much it costs. There's no fixed prices. There's no open books. It's all hidden. The U.S. has the most fucked up health care on earth. But it didn't always. Before the government got involved, no one got thrown out on the street. You could afford prices the same way, you know, if you need to get your teeth fixed or something, or what, you can just pay for it. It doesn't cost that much. If you have market competition, brings the prices down. Like, what if you have no money? Whatever, like, then get a loan, whatever. Anything you... It's unaffordable for everyone if you get the government involved, right? And it wasn't like that. When Dr. Paul started delivering babies, he was a doctor, <clears throat> still is, nobody was thrown out on the street. 
It just did same thing with education. It's like, well, you can pay for it. If you have a job, you can pay. It just doesn't cost that much to go to school. Now it does because of government guaranteed loans. The free market solution is the best solution. It's like, well, what if, what if you don't have money to buy clothes? Well, then you're pretty damn poor if you can't buy a t-shirt, right? The price of clothing doesn't cost much because there's so many stores selling clothing that the competition makes it low enough that basically anyone, even homeless people, can get a jacket or whatever. And you can get health care if you have competition. If drug companies and stuff compete, if prices are fixed and written down and not hidden, and you have volume discount and all that, it will bring the price down to where everyone can afford it. And when you have those major things like cancer or a car accident or whatever, that's what insurance is for. Insurance should not have to be, I got an x-ray, so I need insurance, because that'll be 2000 bucks or whatever. That should never happen. But that happens in the U.S. because of the fucked up system that we got. I interviewed Dr. Uh, David Gershon about it. All the fucked up things in healthcare in the U.S. You should see that. And I could do a likewise stream on Japan and stuff. Better than America, but still so full of problems. And the problems in both countries is always the same denominator. Government. Government is the problem every fucking time. We got great thrift stores. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's hard to deal with something like cancer. But you should, and you're probably either going to beat it or you're not. You're already going to lose your life. Do you need to lose your life savings too? Like at least you could help your family out or something. But it's just a drain. You die and you lose all your money for a whole generation. That's how heartless they are, too. Like, you want to prolong your life a couple months, right? You ought to give us everything you have. I mean, either your immune system beats it or it doesn't. We do have cures for certain types of cancer. Skin cancer, cut it off. There, gets rid of it there. Pancreatic cancer, if it's below stage 3, you can get rid of that. Um, but if you get, like, cancer of the blood or the brain or something, you're fucked. And um, unless your body beats it on its own. The only way to do that is to have sex with Kate Beckinsale. She cures everything. I think that would make your immune system so high that you could beat any cancer. So we should clone her. Start cloning Kate Beckinsale. No, I don't know. Ghost of Jefferson says, High five to you for the news that James Sullivan, brother of John, has been potentially working with the FBI and claims 226 antifa, 226 antifa members started the Capitol Hill riots. I think COINTELPRO did, but I think the Antifa would have been tipped off and told not to show up. Because there's no better, worse optics than that, having Antifa be responsible. But So they would have been told, don't come here. There was a Black Lives Matter activist who was arrested there. Um, you know, a lot of people hate government for different reasons. It's just, I don't, I don't consider that a riot, for one. It's like, okay, they're trespassing a couple hours and then they left. Big deal. The people that died either had heart attacks or got shot by the cops. They Trump people didn't kill anybody. Didn't even shoot at anybody. Didn't attack anybody. Didn't punch anybody. No, what nothing happened. Maybe some of the cops that hit them got hit. But um, that's not a riot. If it was a riot, they would have burned it down. They would have broken everything in there. They could have. They owned that place for two hours. They They didn't. They like the government and law and order. They just don't like this government. Uh, but they really shot themselves in the foot because, God damn it, we worked so hard to get dueling electors sent there and ready for the arguments to be made in front of Pence. And it was happening. You fucking retards ruined it. Don't be violent, especially when you're about to win. Like you had your chance. Do it after they reject it or something. Like not before or especially not in the middle of it. Eric Tool says, uh, will Newsom be forced out? Over a million signatures. Also, how the fuck did Magic Johnson beat HIV AIDS? Well, because AIDS is not what they say it is. I don't know if I get in trouble. I've got the real Gavin. Uh, if you go to, I have got a link on the front of A&C report, even though I'm not from California. I do try to help. 
RecallGavin2020.com. They're at 70% right now. Um, they've got a million four hundred and ninety five thousand seven hundred and nine Californians that have signed the petition. So if you are in California, you can sign this and that's enough to recall. I think they already have enough to recall. I don't know why they're saying 70. I guess they're trying to get money or something, but over a million signatures. He should be recalled. Magic Johnson still has HIV. He doesn't have AIDS. Um, Right, Ryan Dawson interview AIDS. Watch that interview. That'll answer everything. Assuming that wasn't ovened. Captain Gregor for five says, In 2014, I was bleeding internally. No specialist could see me for weeks. So I flew to the Philippines to get fixed up and ended up getting a blood transfusion despite having the best health insurance. Jesus Christ, dude, that sucks. Where are you from? By the way, where did you leave from? I'm guessing the United States. <sighs> no one would see you for weeks. Our medicine sucks. But that's a common thing in uh, other states and other countries. It's a common thing. Going to the Philippines to get fixed up and then getting a blood transfusion. Jesus. We can't help each other. We spend all this money on war, trillions, to go blow up brown people in the Middle East and stuff, and we can't fix our healthcare system. And they never talk about the core problem, the price. The problem is not whether you should pay, or the government should pay, or your employer should pay, or some percentage of those three should pay. It's how much it costs. If you don't fix the problem of price, who all pays is irrelevant. Because you're either paying out the ass in taxes, or you're paying out of pocket, or your employer is getting raped, when it means they're going to fire you or not hire people because they can't pay for all the insurance of all the employees. The problem is the price. And the way to fix the price is to allow price negotiations for Medicare and Medicaid, to allow competition between states for insurance, to allow generics, and to allow market competition. It's simple. It's not anything they have to do. It's a whole bunch of stuff they have to stop doing. Get rid of those protectionist regulations and prices will fall. And that's never addressed. They're like, oh, we need Medicare for all. We need a No, you don't. Do you need to lower the fucking price? And you need to have set price. How much is an x-ray? Well, how much you got? That ain't how it works. Open books. Price transparency. Allegedly, that started on January 1st. Price transparency. That's half of the equation. Oh, it looks here like it cost a lot. Great. Why can't we get the prices down? Because people are scared to deregulate. They don't understand that regulations are written by the corporations. They write their own regulation. They're not there to protect you. They're there to protect the insurance company and the drug company. You need to deregulate all those bad regulations. That will help you fix it. You see how he says he's got a friend in Mexico who gets all his medical stuff done, or from Arizona, gets all his medical stuff done in Mexico when he's on vacation. Saves a lot of money. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything too serious in Mexico, though. But I guess if you went to Mexico City, you'd be all right. But there's some pretty shot, shoddy places down there. But if you lower the price, then the Chosenites won't be able to get rich off of others' suffering. That is true, which is why we don't lower the price. We have to take in consideration the profits of the Chosen Ones. We wouldn't want to piss off the Ferengi. Fire Pixie says, oh snap, is the lucky day. I just found chocolate edible in my fridge. Glory be. <laughs> Glory be his name. Edible chocolates. Hell yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Somebody else found $70, 50 and then 20 Everybody look in your fridge, your couch. You, we're just finding presents today. So for some reason, I'm going to get my fucking pretzel, by the way. Here's a quick commercial. Let's do. Now I've seen this one. And 
Did you just Israel my juice? Did you just Israel my chair? God gave it to me. What? God said I would have it. God said you could have it. That's my juice. I get that back. That's my juice. God said it was mine. Give me my chair. Give me my juice. America! Hey! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! I'm going to rewrite the pimple itself. And my juice. Did you just Israel my juice? Did you just Israel my chair? God gave it to me. What? God said I would have it. God said you could have it. That's my juice. I get that back. That's my juice. God said it was mine. Give me my chair. Give me my juice. America! Hey! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! I'm going to rewrite the film myself. And my juice. Nice car! Should we Israel. Wait? Nah, that's stealing. <laughs> Come on, I'll ask for permission later. Looks more like you're asking for trouble now. Tracks! I figured I wouldn't get caught. That still wouldn't make it right. Think how you'd feel if someone... Israel. ...your car. Yeah, pretty lousy. And if you got caught... You could end up in jail. Remember, Israel... ...something that isn't yours just isn't right. It's stealing. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. The Transformers! Nice car! Should we Israel. Quit? Nah, that's stealing. <laughs> Come on, I'll ask for permission later. <laughs> Looks more like you're asking for trouble. Boom. Don't you love these? Got no salt. I'm hungry. My wife's not here. So, toaster food it is. <laughs> Hooker for five Aussie says separation of business and state came yesterday. I'm stoked. Australia's health care won't last. There used to be two GPs in my town. Now there are eight. Painkillers make heaps of money. Yeah. People get addicted to those things too. Yeah, it, it's a it's fucking It's odd to me that that isn't what we talk about on TV, right? The news is health. Our health. Like our life. No, it's all this money spent on killing people instead. At least for America. Right about everything says, would you rather be there be a cure for cancer or 110 happened and no cure for cancer? That's a trick question because if 110 is a cure for cancer. In a sense. <laughs> I don't know. I think you'd save more lives with the second option, but I'd love to get rid of cancer. Hmm. I mean, in a way, too, it would take a lot of money away from uh, them if we had a cure for cancer. Either one would be good. That's a tough question. You got giant pretzels in the freezer? I love them.
I love these things. I have to order them because they don't have them. <laughs> I order them online. Pretzels and cranberry juice. It's my jam. You can always nuke it and get it cut out, I guess, but like, there's not a really like uh, high probability cure for cancer yet. I'd like one ten to happen, cause that would end all the wars. Think of the trillions saved and the millions of lives. Like, yeah, one ten. I'm going with one ten. One fifty three right now. I think it's really late at night for you guys. So we're going to call it a night. But I will be doing another one. This impeachment thing is a pill. A white pill to swallow. And Texit is another one. I love it. Raise your Bonnie Boo flag, your stars and bars. The South was right. And we still are. Peace.